All right, back at the Young Turks election night coverage. Are you kidding me? We're halfway through. I feel like we just started. Uh, polls are closed. Polls are closed. Panic time. Okay. All right, first I got to tell you how you can watch, and then I'm going to tell you about the polls that have closed. And then we have a shooting, okay, at a polling station. So lots of dramatic near, news. Near a polling station. Near a polling station. Okay. Members, you can check out the simultaneous coverage happening just for you guys. We've got this stream, and then we've got a second stream. Uh, and of course, to join is tytnetwork.com slash join. Uh, but then once you're there, tytnetwork.com slash members live. Okay? That's how you watch the second stream. You can double stream here, just don't cross them. Uh, you can check out the schedule for uh, this, and I believe for the members only stream as well at tytnetwork.com slash members schedule. Yes, that's got the annoying two S's in the middle, members schedule, okay? And it includes uh, member interaction with Dave Kohler, Gigi Manukian, quizzes with party guests about the primary. We just had Brian Ungertaker, Ida Rodriguez there. They did a great segment. There's a poster giveaway about Dapple. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're not a member, remember tytnetwork.com slash join. Okay, here are your poll closings. I'll show you the poster you could win in a second, which is great. Uh, Georgia just closed. Sorry, Georgia's done. It's done. <laughs> oh my God, who's going to win Georgia? Trump. Indiana, Indiana. It's closed. It's closed. It's done. It's done. I'm sorry, it's done. They're, they're kicking you out. They're kicking you out of the polling stations. Indiana's closed. Uh, who's going to win it? Trump. But these are not called yet, by the way. I'll tell you when it's officially called. Uh, but we do have a, a, a Senate race there where Evan Bayes bungled it away. And he, and he will uh, likely lose, but it's not 100% safe. Kentucky, close. They're kicking you out. They're kicking you out. Please clap. Uh, and <laughs> Please clap. Tr Trump. Uh, oh, my God. Trump's got such a huge lead. He's going to win the first three states. Oh, my God. South Carolina, close. First four states go to Trump. Jesus, Lord mercy. They're not called yet. They're not called yet. Just calm down. Okay, I'm telling you to calm down as I'm screaming. Here we go. The great state of Vermont is just closed. We're going to bring uh, we're gonna bring Vermont home. That's what we're going to do. We're going to bring it home. Uh, and Virginia. Okay. Now, all kidding aside, the one state that is super relevant and we will keep you updated on uh, throughout uh, this hour is Virginia. So the rest are solidly red, or in the case of Vermont, solidly blue. Virginia is one of the critical swing states. I don't have it in my top six because I thought Hillary Clinton's lead was sizable enough in Virginia that she was going to win it, uh, but she must. If she loses Virginia, oh boy. You'll notice uh, Virginia. You go to the board. Go to the board. You'll notice uh, Virginia's uh, placement uh, on this uh, map. Move. First of all, can we widen out the shot slightly, uh, uh, or I'll hold it up? But that's a little awkward. Uh, Virginia, you'll notice there in the black in the middle. We we're officially calling it a swing state, but we're being generous with our swing state terms because we want dramatic moments. Okay, we're being uh, honest about it. We're uh, being honest. But obviously, a Trump Trump win in Virginia uh, devastating. Catastrophic. <laughs> Catastrophic. Uh, as would a Trump win in Pennsylvania. We'll uh, check to see if any of those states have been called. We'll have that information for you as soon as we can. Yes. So the minute we have information from any of the news sources, we will scream. Okay. So it'll be subtle. The way we'll tell you is, oh my God, results are in Virginia. Okay. So uh, that's it. Now in 730, uh, we've got poll closing times in North Carolina, Ohio, and West Virginia, North Carolina, Ohio, also swing states. Trump likely to win Ohio, but it's certainly not certain. Certainly not certain is a great term. And then, um, and then <coughs> North Carolina is actually in more dispute than Ohio is. So if Hillary Clinton wins North Carolina, it's over. It's over. Pack up. I mean, keep watching for the next six hours. <laughs> okay. we, have, uh, <laughs> we have three states so called. They're called. We have calls. Go. Uh, the uh, state of Indiana. Called. Called. 11 electoral votes. Donald Trump. Do he's, he's winning 11 nothing. We're done uh, for. Uh, Trump from the outside scores from the Commonwealth of Kentucky. He's got a 19 to nothing lead. Well, you said oh! Commonwealth, and you said from the outside for a second. I panicked that it was Virginia uh, or uh, or Pennsylvania. I know, but I Pennsylvania hasn't yeah. closed it. Uh, so uh, 19 nothing, but the comeback has already begun. Oh my God! A three pointer from Burlington, Vermont, buried for Hillary Clinton. She's on the board. It's 19 to three. Uh, the home of Bernie Sanders. Does Bernie deliver? Always, always. But right now, guys, it is panic time. We're losing 19-3. 19-3, Trump takes the early lead. But is that Clinton from behind? <laughs> Here comes Hillary Clinton! I will say for the rest of the night until she takes the lead momentarily. She won't, she won't at the 7 o'clock hour.
No. In the 7 o'clock hour, uh, you can add Virginia to that list, we hope, uh, but he will have the lead going into 7.30. He'll maintain the lead through 7.30. 8 o'clock is when uh, we start yelling, here comes Hillary, although the first state on the board there is Alabama. I have an unusual request that I haven't, nor I don't think, ever made on the air. I think I left my blue magic marker uh, outside on the on the main bar, if somebody could grab okay. my blue magic marker, that would be great. Yes, okay, <laughs> we, we're, we, we will effort that immediately, okay. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but the red-blue map originally made its uh, appearance in 1976 on ABC, and it was actually switched. They had the blue was for the Republicans, Is that right? and red was for the Democrats, and they based it off the, uh, the Tories and the Labor Party in uh, England. Hmm. This is, uh, I'm pretty sure all this is true. <laughs> <laughs> so Jimmy laying down a lot of history lately. You know, after the post game yesterday, which a lot of people, uh, uh, a lot of the members really loved, which was great. So that was mm -hmm. me, Ben, and Jimmy uh, arguing a little bit. Um, but uh, I went back and checked out uh, your Malcolm X clip on the Jimmy Dore show. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, and that was great. It was great about the fox and the wolf that you talked about in the second hour of today as well. So, yeah, no, Malcolm X, uh, kind of a bright guy. But, you know, there was an irony built into that, and then we'll get to the shooting, uh, is that he talked about how, uh, you know, Lyndon Johnson is the fox, and they present you Barry Goldwater, who's the wolf, to scare you into voting for the fox, right? But, you know, he, him and Martin Luther King, they also played that game. Okay, now, it was for the right reasons, mm -hmm. and it was not a fox that isn't a bad thing, right? But... Malcolm X was the wolf, so you went, oh, Martin Luther King, I'll take Martin Luther King. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Do you see what I'm saying? And yes. so uh, Malcolm X so was... You take the nice, or non-violent black guy or the violent, scary black guy? Yeah, so Malcolm X was even smarter than people realize because he was completely familiar with that concept and he was actually playing three-dimensional chess. Was he really doing that? Like, we know he was playing no, that game? Look, that, that's my reading of it. Uh -huh. I've, I've read his autobiography. I've read a lot about Malcolm X. I'm not a scholar on it, obviously. It's mm -hmm. not, I'm not like John Iderola, who almost got a PhD. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm still working on it, Jimmy. He's working on uh, it. Yeah, and, and so, you guys but, are the worst. <laughs> I love the attacks on people in the company who aren't on the panel to defend oh, themselves. Oh, sorry, Johnny Ty. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, we were too nice to him earlier. We got to make up for it. Uh, but yeah, so uh, so that's an interesting strategy, and one yeah. Malcolm X uh, deployed as he was talking about it. So fascinating mm -hmm. stuff. Okay. All right. The shooting. All right. So we have uh, a lot of election-related news, um, but. Something pretty terrible happened near a polling place in Azusa, California. There are early reports of an active shooter in Azusa, California. Now, as we report on this story, unfortunately, there are very few details as to whether or not police have this person in custody, but they did describe him as a bald, heavy white male who was heavily armed. Uh, multiple people were shot and injured. We know that one person is dead, but it's uncertain as to whether or not uh, the person who was killed was the shooter or if it was a victim. Um, now, this happened near a polling station. There were two polling places in the area, actually. Uh, the Memorial Park North Recreation Center and Dalton Elementary School. Uh, both of those places uh, were impacted by the shooting. People were forced to stay indoors and they were locked down. Also, Slauson Middle School, which was near the location of the police activity, was also placed on lockdown. We have this, you know, image, actually we have a video of these kids, they're in school, they're sitting on the ground. I mean, it's a scary situation. Let's take a quick look at that. So there they are, they're in lockdown, and apparently the teachers and administrators didn't want to tell them what was going on, but they're afraid, you know? They're, they're afraid that something's gonna happen to the kids. Apparently, at the polling station, people were told, well, you're not allowed to leave, you're on lockdown because there's an active shooter, but if you want to continue voting, you can go ahead and do that. <laughs> yeah, so. well, I would have kept voting because that maybe that could solve it. Uh, but, so here's the situation. I don't know that it has anything to do with the, the election because remember, there is a mass shooting on average more than once a day in America. That's where four people get shot. Uh, depending on your definition, you can either get shot or get killed. In, in, and so last year it was more than one per day. Mm -hmm. So on election day, on average, you would have one. And there's a lot of polling stations across the country, so you might have one near a polling station. Yeah. And, and in this case, I don't even know that it even technically qualifies as a mass shooter. 
It's just an active shooter. It's an active shooter. <laughs> Again, we don't know much about this story because police aren't speaking yet. We don't know if this guy's in custody. Um, we know that you know the area that the shooting took place is completely shut down. Uh, people can't get in. They can't get out. Um, and it's scary. It's also really interesting because right now California voters are voting on a proposition that would uh, lead to background checks. If it's passed, it would lead to background checks for those who uh, try to get high capacity magazines. Um, and so, again, I don't know if this guy had a political agenda. I don't know if he was trying to make a point. He's obviously crazy. Um, but the important thing is that, you know, they get this guy in custody and he doesn't cause any more damage or harm. Well, look, I'm going to keep it real here. You know that it, it, he's described as white. So they'll say, I will never know why he did it. He's a lone wolf, Cenk. <laughs> He's a lone this, wolf. This guy, you can't figure it out. Right. He's disgruntled, I bet you. Right. Nothing to do with religion. Yeah. If, if we had a Muslim shooting somewhere uh, in the middle of the election, ISIS is trying to disrupt elections. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, if we have a right winger, and we don't know that at all, and like I told you, we don't know if he's e even got anything to do with elections. It might just be a random shooter. So we have a... But if if it turns out it's in that direction, oh, it's just oh, that's no big deal. That's not a story, right? He's not trying to disrupt the elections. He's just just an American, right? Yeah. So there's a lot <laughs> of local American. news reports about this. There isn't very much national coverage, and I'm guessing it's because of the election. And it's it's scary to know that someone can go out there and you know be heavily armed, open fire, um, possibly kill people, and it gets no national coverage. So yeah. we'll see. It, and even so, look, it's a. Uh, since it's election day, I actually think it's more likely to get coverage, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but it, they'll drop it like a rock if it's a right winger. Like they, they usually cover it for a day, and they're like, "Oh, look, look at this in Kansas, a right winger kills, executes two cops." And then we're done with it, right? Mm -hmm. But if it's a black guy and it's in Dallas or Louisiana, weeks and months of coverage, right? Because there's an agenda to be driven. When it's a right wing, there's no agenda. We move forward, right? Yeah. Can I also make a point about gun control? So we talk about gun control. We we vary in terms of how much gun control we want. I would argue that I'm in, in favor of, you know, not banning guns. I just want simple things like background checks, whatever. But here's the thing. California has some of the more restrictive uh, laws in place when it comes to gun control. But it's not enough. It, it, you can't leave it to the states because we are one country and it's the easiest thing in the world to go to a different state, get your hands on as many guns as you want, bring them into your state. You see what I'm saying? So it, it, California passing this proposition of background checks for high capacity magazines is nice, but I don't think it's going to do anything. We need something on a federal level. Uh, I agree with that, but it's a good first step. It, I, I view this ballot initiative in California as pretty much the Chris Rock strategy, mm -hmm. right? If we can't get more stringent checks on w guns, well, let's put them on bullets. And so, mm -hmm. you know, Chris Rock has that joke about make the bullets worth a thousand dollars, and we'll have gun control. And so, uh, that's kind of what. Do. So I was like, hey, I love it. I want gun control. Yeah. So if we're gonna do, if that's the way we get around checking to make sure we don't have mentally ill people and terrorists and et cetera, all these or. Uh, People who have been proven to be violent and have a history of violence, etc. Checking on them to make sure they're not buying tons and tons of ammunition. Great, mm -hmm. great. Doesn't mean you can't buy ammunition. Okay, it, it just means hey, let's do a sanity check before you buy. It. Right. It's the literally the least, least we can do. What if I'm insane and, and I like to shoot for sport? <laughs> well, then I'm then you're then you're taking away my constitutional right just because I'm insane. <laughs> Look, I, I yeah, get, I, that that happens sometimes. That's that's, that's tyranny, <laughs> yeah. or sanity, <laughs> right? I don't know. You I know, like, I know people who who do. Look, Jordan, who is a viewer of the show, part of my family now, like someone that I really care about, he lives in Arkansas and he loves to go hunting. And he not not only hunts for sport, he literally hunts for food, right? And and like saves deer meat for. I don't know how long in his freezer, and it's delicious, by the way. Uh, but nonetheless, like I, I don't want him to have his guns taken away, but I do want common sense gun legislation that doesn't lead to a country where everyone is swimming in guns, where there's more guns per capita uh, than any other country in the world. I want to take away assault rifles and handguns. I do. Yeah. I would great. like to take away assault rifles and handguns, but leave people guys who want to fight hunt with a shotgun or whatever. Yeah, fine. Rifle? Give them a rifle. Go ahead, have a have, rifle. Have five. Don't yeah. care. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I'm. I I'd go further. Um, so, 
Look, I had a friend in college that educated me about this because I didn't know about it, right? Uh, I grew <coughs> up in a suburb. We shopped for bagels. Okay, that's that's what we did. We eat that. I, I grew up in the city. We steal bagels. <laughs> <laughs> so there was no, yeah. Uh, the hunt was on for good uh, cream cheese and lox. Mm -hmm. uh, but for in, a friend of mine was from Texas, and uh, and so it. It just took too long. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, it didn't work quite. <laughs> Anyway, he was from Texas, and and they were poor, and they would and he would hunt for rabbit, and then they would eat it because that's what they needed, right? Mm -hmm. I get that. Look, uh, we're killing each other at a record rate, and we do it with weapons, and we do, and it becomes much more efficient to kill your family, your loved ones, etc. So I would have, yeah, you could have a, you could own a gun, mm -hmm. and it's in a locker somewhere where it's super safe, and then when you want to go hunt, you drive to that locker for five minutes because there's no emergency, right? And you go and you get your gun and you go and get your rabbits, etc., deer, yada yada, and then you bring it back and put it in that safe locker. So that way your kids don't uh, die unnecessarily. Now I'm never going to win this. I know that. I like in this country, we it's too late. There's 250 million guns out there. We're never going to get them all back, mm -hmm. right? So, but that's my position. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. We we would we would lose uh, apparently. An election mm -hmm. because we, we, we when they say about Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama they're coming to take your guns they're just lying they are they're, yeah. stirring, yes. they're not only stirring up the paranoia of those who will vote based on that issue but they're also driving up gun sales you know it's because the sense of oh buy your guns now because they're coming to get them uh, I would come to get them yeah, <laughs> yeah I would yeah, yeah. and well, funny enough though not all we, of them again the rifles and the long guns and the shotguns I'd get the good rifles too but <laughs> but no. I'll tell you what though under that scenario I might own a weapon. Like it might be cool to have a rifle as long as it's not in the house that I can go get and then we go and we maybe we shoot her for fun, right? But Depending imagine on this, the right Jake, circumstances. It's two in the morning, you're sleeping in bed, okay, you're with your wife, and yeah. then all of a sudden you hear someone breaking into the house. What are you gonna do to protect yourself? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Well that actually happened. I wake up and I actually did happen. Oh yeah, it did happen. Oh, yeah. I forget oh. about that. What are you gonna do, Jenk? Uh, we did not murder the guy and he's okay and we're okay. So That's, let me give you a couple. Let me give, you're a cuck. Let me <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you a couple updates because I, I'm following the results here and I'm so paranoid, right? I mean, I'm really, because there was a result of Florida and the way the New York Times does it is they'll tint the thing, the color that it's going, even if it's like 9-4 Trump, they'll tint it red, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Florida was, but it was 130,000 to like 57,000. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, we're mm -hmm. going to lose, we're going to lose because she's going to get destroyed, even though it's like, it's, anyway, so, but it's now... 440,000 to 430,000 Clinton. In Florida? In Florida. Now remember, that's a little, okay, I am a tiny bit worried about that. I'll tell you why. Because they're supposed to have the early voting immediately as soon as the polls close. And so she's supposed to have a big lead in the early voting yeah, in Florida. But, well, we, we don't know. We, we, we're supposed to have, there's no reason to think that, yes, yeah, she's supposed to have a lead. She might continue to have, we don't know where that early vote has come from. We don't know. And remember, Florida, the most of Florida closes at 7. The Panhandle closes at 8. Uh, so that's and what. And the Panhandle it will be Trump territory. No that's question. Right. So, that's right. Because that's the South. So she, in the early voting, because of all the Latino registration, record breaking Latino registration in Florida, even with the Cubans that are more Republican historically, so it was thought to greatly favor Hillary Clinton. And it doesn't have the Panhandle. Well, the early voting had the panhandle, but the, the rest of the state is closed without the panhandle. So Hillary Clinton should have a lead. It, but it's it, just, it, it's, it's minutes. It's, it's two minutes. It's minutes, and she's just surged massively to take a lead. Uh -huh. And as we remember from every other election, we know what counties get counted last. And those mm -hmm. are the Broward and, and Miami Dade, which are the two biggest counties likely in the state for Hillary Clinton. So, right, those it, are the Demo far more Democratic counties. Uh, Even with all the Cubans in Miami, Dade. we have some minimal results from Virginia. Still, some very minimal results from uh, New Hampshire. Not even none of them are worth uh, none of them are worth mentioning yet. Also, very minimal results from uh, from Georgia. Totally insignificant uh, mm -hmm. numbers at this point. Nothing else has come in. So the bottom line there that is that it's trickling in. Okay? It's trickling in, and in and fact, Trump is now taking the lead in Florida. He's taking the lead. <laughs> in, taking wait, the lead. where? In, in Florida. Florida. Okay. And so, come on, stop doing this every two seconds. We're yeah, gonna start I agree. Killing ourselves. I agree. Uh, by the way, the uh, so who's this tweet from? Here we go. And I'll play a little game. Who's this tweet from? Mm -hmm. Tweet sent today. I like how Ben moved the computer so I don't pull it. <laughs> I know. No, no, it's not going to sneak a peek. <laughs> no, no, but it's too. No, it was. That's not. It was not pulling a Trump. It's too obvious. Like you can't. The okay. table's curved. You you couldn't not see it. Okay. And you're also dishonest.
Um, <laughs> spending your day manually refreshing Drudge Report is very 1990s. And what all Hollywood agents, Wall Streeters, Hill staff will do today. Hollywood agents? That's... Hollywood agents, Wall Streeters, Hill staff will do today. Who, who I'm sent guess it? David Sirota. Uh, no, you're in the wrong direction. Of course, it's someone who's actually going to be doing it today. Mark Halpern. Mm. What, what a bizarre thing. That's what he does. Yeah, That's why what he does still. Well, still. But still. it seems like he's mocking the thing that he's doing. No, I think he's saying... Oh, he's not mocking it. He's, he's like, not mocking yeah, it. let's he, look at drugs He's like, people will be doing 90s, oh but every, my God. he's still checking the... That's oh still his definition. God. That's that's unbelievable. Isn't that? I knew you'd think that. I thought it was Sirota criticizing the schmucks who were still checking Drudge mm -hmm. after Drudge had been proven to be a, not only uh, a extreme right winger but also like borderline lunatic mm -hmm. with his conspiratorial yes. theories about how the Obama administration is controlling the weather. Right. And so, I, I, like, I, I'm checking Drudge tonight as we go through because I think it'll be interesting to see what the conspiratorial crazy line of thinking is. Right. 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 Uh, but he's already, there's already stu huge stories in there about how um, uh, Snowden reveals $30 fraud hack. Um, you know, uh, a woman charged oh, with felony after casting vote for dead twice. Like, so there's a, he's got a voter fraud story in there. Like, and Mark Halperin is reading this, and this is his primary source for what, what America's talking about. Because what he said in, Whichever book it was, I don't remember which book. Maybe Game Change. Um, I think so. Uh, he said that every morning, the first thing they do, and maybe all day, the first thing they do was, and what did the networks all do? He said was they we all just tr check Drudge to see what's happening, oh, to see amazing. what's happening. So their whole day, their whole framework for covering. No wonder you want to know why Swift Boat, why John Kerry got Swift Boated. Because of Mark Halperin. Because Mark Halperin, he didn't do it. He just allowed it to happen. And then we saw Halperin's interview, of course, with Donald Trump, which I think revealed to a lot of people, uh, you know, exactly what, uh, where, where, where Mark Halperin stood. So, but if you're new to politics and you don't know who the fuck Mark Halperin is, okay, he is the prototypical mainstream media reporter. Uh, he's the guy who says, "Well, I'm just neutral, man. I just, I just report it as it is." He said, "She said, both sides do it, right?" That's yeah. what Jimmy makes fun of all the time. And he's worked for a lot of these mainstream media organizations. He's on Morning Joe. They all love him because, uh, hey, they both do it. They both do it. You need a neutral guy that doesn't have an opinion uh, or any connection to sanity, you get Mark Halpert. And so that is the, the, the kind of crap that is rewarded in mainstream media. Mm -hmm. Like they look at Mark Halpert's fawning interview with Trump, which was just embarrassing. Embarrassing, right? You, you want to know how many millennials uh, watch anything Mark Halpern does? Zero. Zero. Maybe like, like three. He's like but, Kanye to them. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. No, but no, he's but, so, but that's the thing. Like, I, it's ridiculous that he does that, but he's destroying his own career, or at least the future of his career, right? But, he's irrelevant to my age group, totally irrelevant I to my I understand, but he is not irrelevant to many other age groups who mm -hmm. vote in a, right now, and a bunch, you know, I got it. Your age yeah. group is going to get older, and they're going to move into the older age group, and, yeah. uh, and that's going to matter. But... But, you know, uh, I got a friend of mine, a super smart friend of mine, a, a liberal guy. Thanks. Huh? Thanks. I've been reading a lot more lately. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and because of Game Change, like, which he loved, he thinks Mark Halpern is the man. Mm -hmm. Because that's it. He doesn't know. He, I'll but, tell you but, about but, Mark Halpern. He's a lot. I, now, when you see him on TV, I always thought he was going to be like 5'6". I met him in person. He's like five eleven. He's much taller than you would imagine, and that's all I have to say about him. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. To no, be I, fair, I, yeah. some say he's five eleven. Some say he's five six. I guess we'll never know. We'll never know. <laughs> we'll never know. <laughs> that would have, that's how Mark Halpern would cover I'm, that story. I'm neutral on how tall he is. <laughs> right. So, Don't read the Drudge Report to find out what's going on. And the Mark Halperns of the world will then turn around and say, "Okay, even though he has." An, Admitted to him, it's not an admission. Like, oh, of course, my, you know, my Drudge Report, insane lunatic right wing stuff. Great, that's what you do. You, that's the first thing you do in the morning, right? <laughs> but if you if you said to him, hey, why don't you check out the Intercept, or uh, it, with the same kind of religiosity that you do yeah. the Drudge Report, or uh, you know, or Interna the Bar International Business Times, uh, right? David Sirota's. He got like, oh, David Sirota. Oh, no, no, no. That's a radical. Yeah. Actual what? investigative reporting, those people are radical. Right. I mean, 
The Intercept has done so much incredible investigative reporting when it comes specifically to foreign policy that you don't see anywhere else, right? But they're considered crazy because they actually share their opinion in a very honest way. They don't try to pretend to be neutral or any of that BS. Yeah, and, and look, it's they explain how the world works. So in order to do that, it's not an opinion as much as it's perspective. So hey, Chris Christie, now I'm going to talk about Sirota specialty, but it applies to the intercept as well. Here's what he's doing with your pension fund in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And he's doing it because these are the guys who donated to his campaign. Mark, we see that, and that is a fact. They, they did donate to his campaign. He did funnel the pension money uh, to his donors, right? The Mark Halpers of the world see that and go biased. You see that? He doesn't like Chris Christie. I'm going to ignore him. Mm -hmm. What? No, but he just shared a perspective that is so important and is based completely on fact, right? Whereas Drudge is a right, no one disputes that he's a right winger. Drudge no, doesn't no, dispute it. The Drudge doesn't really dispute it, right? And he, and he, and the weather theory that I was referring to is he literally thinks that the Obama administration was fixing the hurricane reports to make it seem like the hurricane was going to be worse. What? Because, and all the scientists are like, you can't fix those reports. That's just not remotely true. Well, why but would that is apparently in the Mark Halpern world, that is not biased. But reporting facts that show you the corruption of the system is biased. That's why, and all of this, and if you're thinking, for God's sake, why are you guys spending so much time on an irrelevant guy like Mark Halpern, who a couple of who, hold on, who a couple of years from now, if Anna's right, is going to go into the dustbin of history? Because right now, as Ben pointed out, it is not irrelevant. Right now, he is symbolic of the mainstream media that tells you the system is not corrupt, the system is wonderful, right? And, and, and corruption, you haven't proved anything. No, there's no, I don't know, where's the proof? I don't see the proof, right? But we'll take right-wing dribble and, and publish it to the whole world. You see, it isn't about Halpern, because there's a, it's a country of 300 million people. There's plenty of people who think like Mark Halpern. There's some, a, a, thousands upon thousands of reporters who don't. But he's the one that makes it on air all the time. Mm -hmm. He makes it on to Morning Joe, which everybody in Washington watches. He makes it on to Meet the Press nonstop. He worked at Time Magazine. He uh, Even HBO. HBO is such a great organization, but they'll run his movie and his depiction of the campaigns. And all you see through that, and you might not see it if you're a millennial, but the, the people on that watch TV, the older generations, all they see is Mark Halpern that, type of perspective. Yes. And it is so skewered in favor of the establishment and right wing positions. That's why we spend talk, time talking about it to debunk it. And so that tweet that Ben read in the beginning is just an emblematic of his way of thinking. To this late day, the mainstream corporate media thinks, okay, great, where can I get my right wing news? And yeah. anyone who challenges the establishment is a radical that we'll never ever put on air. What if? What if he is a right winger? No, by the way, people always think like, oh, Halpern, he said, she said, like we were talking mm -hmm. about it. But in reality, he's probably a Democrat, but he's trying too hard to please. No, my theory is uh, Mark Halpern has been, I'm the first guy to say that. And I remember when I said, people were like, no, what's the no part? Yeah. Yeah, the more, what's the, no <laughs> the Occam's <laughs> razor. The simple answer is, yeah, Mark Halpern's a Republican. The, uh, what's interesting, yeah. what, here, and the frustrating thing, among the frustrating things, is like this guy, the first, response to him was, Mark, you've been exposed as a pocket reporter. The, this sink, he says, the sink will last a lifetime. I'm going to guess he meant stink. Mm -hmm. um, always proofread your tweets. But I, I don't, I have a sink from the 20s. <laughs> so they, sometimes they last. Um, and, uh, and it's WikiLeaks, uh, something from, somebody made something from WikiLeaks, journalist outed as Clinton Stooges. Uh -huh. And in the list includes John Heilman and Mark Halpern. So <laughs> that's the right. no, no. And I yeah. overheard somebody the other day at a diner saying, "Oh, political. They're left wing." Oh, oh. I know wing. that's what's the killer, right? Yeah. Right. So that makes this makes this battle super hard. That's super exactly right. Hard, because yeah. what they do is they bring on these guys. And I, look, I say Mark Halpern. The simple explanation is that he's a Republican. I don't know which way he votes. I just want to be clear about that. But it, I mean, there's only two explanations. One is he thinks he's a liberal but repeats Republican talking points ad nauseum, which makes him a giant sucker and an idiot, right? Uh, or he's just a Republican and he's like, great, they gave me a forum to spew Republican talking points, right? So, um, but when it, when it comes to um, these guys uh, and, and 
what they do on top is they say, oh, by the way, all these guys spewing Republican talking points are actually liberals. Right? Politico is liberal, Mark Halpern is liberal, everybody in the media is liberal. So they take a right wing position and they pretend that it's the left. left. Mm -hmm. So they say, okay, now if you want to be reasonable, even though this is a spectrum and they're all the way over here, you got to go this far out to the right. Mm -hmm. So that's how you move the Overton window. So you get useful tools like Mark Halperin, no matter whatever is in his empty little head, right? And he spews out right wing talking points and pretends it's left wing. And everybody goes, oh, then I guess we've got to move further right. And that's the situation we're in. Um, let me give you a little update from Florida. Uh, not so much the issue, it's basically tied. Um, but the, it says 3% reporting. But as we look at these numbers, it's not 3% reporting because the result is right now it's 1.83 million for Hillary to 1.80 million for Trump. So she's ahead by about 300, about uh, 25,000 votes out of 3.6 million cast. In Florida. In Florida. But it's not 3% reporting. Only, like, that's 3.6 million cast. The results in Florida in uh, 2012 uh, were 4.2 million to 4.1 million, like 8.3 million cast. There's expected to be a higher number here, but that was 8.3 million. Like, they're going to be about, at most, 9 million, 9.3 million, maybe. So that's a big, significant percentage of votes that have been cast. Yeah, like more than a third, because they're counting, they're, they're counting early votes. So when mm -hmm. they say 3%, that, I presume, means today. But they are clearly bringing in significant numbers of early votes being cast in Hillary Clinton with a, uh, a nominal, almost insignificant 25,000 vote lead out of 3.6 million cast right now. Uh, but it is also possible that, um, that they have, for whatever reason, we thought they would have the early votes in immediately. But if they're only reporting 3%, maybe they're not reporting, they haven't reported the early vote yet. I think the 3% is the amount of day of to precincts that are people voted today. The early vote is just, these numbers get added. Okay, so you're saying those are two separate things. There's some, saying, I think, oh, of today's vote, 3% are in. And clearly a lot of early. But 3 million votes overall, over 3 million votes overall are in, and, th and the real numbers are she's leading by 25 votes. Right, and, and she, and those, are, and those 3 million are clearly almost all early votes, and I presume we're going to get to maybe 5 or 6 million of early votes in the next half hour. Like, oh, and by the way, so that's a great point. And so you got to know this for the rest of the night. So when they say percent reporting, it does not, uh, I, I realize as we were talking it through, does not include early reporting because they don't know which precincts it came from. Right? Like, I don't think they're coming in and going, not that they don't know it overall, but like, okay, in uh, Broward we had uh, okay. X amount of early votes, so I'm going to say that the 17% of Broward is reporting. So you're saying. That's not how it works, right? So the percent reporting is just day of. Okay, but that doesn't mean it, that the vote count you're getting is actually that percentage, because for some of the states it includes early voting. By the way, we've crossed 60,000 viewers concurrently at the same time, so we're keep we're breaking records as we go here. Share a thon, keep sharing, share on Facebook, share on Twitter, retweet it, share on YouTube, embed the link. Uh, send the link by email. Do everything you can. Get everybody to watch it here. The minute we got news, we're gonna we're gonna come in with it right now. We're in fact we have news right now. We we've got another state on the board, and it is not good news. West Virginia has gone to Donald Trump. West Virginia has gone to Donald Trump. There you go. Yeah, West Virginia to Trump, 24 to three. I don't know if she can come back. She is down. He has got eight times as many electoral college votes as she does. <laughs> 24 can, to three. You know, if she comes back from this, it'll be the biggest comeback in American history. <laughs> it will. That's right. No one's ever been down eight times eight. as many electoral college votes before and come back and won. Not okay. this early. Okay. <laughs> if you're just tuning in, uh, Georgia, Indiana, Kentucky, South Carolina, Vermont, and Virginia close at 7 o'clock Eastern. And just seven minutes ago, North Carolina, Ohio, and West Virginia closed. The minute there's uh, news on that, we'll give it to you. And Florida outside of the panhandle is closed. So that's why we're reporting that for you. So of those closings so far, the ones that are already on the board, deep red or deep blue, whether it's you know Kentucky or, or, or Vermont, but the ones to look out for, Virginia, North Carolina, Ohio, and Florida. So like I said, they've all closed with the exception of the Florida panhandle. So whoa, Nelly. Uh, well, let me tell you about the 2016 election. Uh, so now, now we're in the heart of it, and and we are gonna. And you know what happened? As I was telling you that, I got nervous. I got like a pit into my stomach mm -hmm. because we've been joking around all day, and you know that's partly what we do. And then we 
give you the information and stuff. And those uh, last minute polls that had had swung in Hillary Clinton's direction gave us a, I, I don't know about you guys, it gave me a little bit of relief, right? Because uh, I was worried that it was tightening over the weekend and then the surge did not come for Trump according to the polling, it came for Hillary Clinton. Now, right now there isn't anything too much to be worried about. I, she could lose Florida, by the way, and Ohio and North Carolina and still win. And I don't know about comfortably, but win. She could be Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, and she doesn't even need about as long as she gets Colorado and Virginia. Uh, if we start telling you about Virginia not going well, then okay, get worried. If for those who thought it's going to be a landslide, if she loses Florida, it's not going to be a landslide, right? Uh, if she wins Florida, then it's over. Okay, that means very likely she's won Pennsylvania, and it's she's going to be over 300 electoral votes. And that doesn't necessarily mean landslide, but it means that's a comfortable win. So that's why these Florida results are super, super important. Uh, Virginia, 10% uh, reporting. Uh oh. Okay, hold on. Buckle up. 54-41. Uh, Trump. Yeah, just what we didn't, yeah. No, no, no. 161,000, no, 123,000. No, no, I'm now actually worried. I'm not kidding. Okay. <laughs> because look, it's 10% reporting. Don't panic, okay? Uh, but 54 41, not good news in Virginia, not a good start. And now, Virginia is a state that is um, very bifurcated. So you've got uh, the southern regions that are uh, much more red. And you've got Northern Virginia, which is now solidly blue. So it 100 percent depends on where that 10 percent is coming from. And knowing the, the demographics of Virginia, it's almost certainly covering from Southern Virginia. Uh, but still, as we do that, mm, the knot in my stomach got a little worse. Okay? So after all this talk of no big deal and yeah, it's, we're going to know and we know who it's going to be. If he wins Virginia, batten down the hatches. Yeah, I think if he wins Virginia, it's. A, I mean, I don't think that we have any sign. We have no reason to panic. It's impossible not to look at numbers that are bad and not worry a little bit. But but they, as you said, with your excellent use of the word bifurcated. Um, I don't. You. I don't think we have any reason uh, uh, yet to panic. That said, if Virginia were to go wrong, uh, it's a it's a it's a massive heart attack. Yeah, so it hasn't gone wrong yet. Yeah, it's ten yeah, percent yeah. reporting, but uh, I'll tell you. Look, it got quiet in here the minute we started reporting these real results. Yep. And uh, <laughs> and if that continues, there is going to be a pall in here. Uh, oh, I don't even want. I mean, I. I yes, where are? I will cry. I will literally cry. Yeah. I'm not even kidding. Um, Patrick Leahy uh, won Senate seat in Vermont. Okay. Just, so, I mean, good. I think we were fantastic. Okay, good news, good news. <laughs> we're right back on the board. We're back in the board. Okay, all right. Patrick Lee <gasps> could not have been more of a shoe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I know. Guy who had no chance to lose didn't lose. Okay, okay, right, fantastic. Something, something. I don't even know if they ran anyone against them or if they were just like, uh, we're going to run Rumple Stillskin against Patrick Leahy. I don't know. <laughs> uh, numbers uh, 100,000 vote lead for Trump in Florida, 2.194 to 2.094, exactly 100,000 votes basically for Trump leading in Florida. And again, that's four point, basically 4.2 million votes uh, cast in Florida. That is about half of the number of votes cast in 2012. Uh, we expect the turnout to be uh, a little bit higher, but it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to go from 8 million to 15 million. Uh, so we're about halfway done with counting in Florida, getting close to halfway done in Trump with a 100,000 vote lead. That's a lot of early votes uh, as they continue to have a pretty low number for only 7% of the people who voted today uh, in in Florida. Look, maybe uh, uh, likely this thing turns around and, you know, uh, we'll look back at these 17 minutes or so with shits and giggles and like I remember for like a second we were a little worried right mm -hmm. um, and, and if that happens we'll be like oh, that's, that's funny. we just got a little scared we got a little yeah. scared that was funny right a little scared <laughs> uh, but right now no I'm I'm a little I mean he's leading in Florida he's leading in Virginia we're gonna take a break in a couple of minutes and that is gonna be a heart pounding break uh, going into the first break after the after the results uh, have begun to come in not exactly what we anticipated. It, and again, important context here. 
So it's not like you look at Georgia and Indiana and Kentucky and get worried. We're not schmucks. Red states are always going to go to Trump. That doesn't bother me one second. Of course, of course. And if you had a Trump supporter who was like, oh my God, did you guys hear we lost Vermont? <laughs> like they don't know anything about politics. But Virginia and Florida, really, really important. If he wins them both, uh, it's kind of already over. And Trump would be the next president of the United States. I tweeted Michael, I texted Michael, are they loving early numbers there? Just because I'm sure at Trump Because Trump is, yeah, Michael Shore is at Trump headquarters right now. Michael says, no, it's still pretty quiet because he's in a cab. <laughs> he's, he's probably in that cab thinking, I'm winning with these early results. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. and what would Feeling he know, real good about right? himself. So we're telling you, temperate, it's 10% yeah, reporting. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not that big a deal, yeah, right? I just wanted to but get like, But if Trump sees those, he's like, okay, that's it. That's it. All right, guys, well, let's measure the drapes, okay? What, I'm going to put in Trump curtains in the Oval Office, okay? Made we're, in uh, we're, we, and you know, making no, hey, Don, and no, and you know how it is. There's the yes men around him, like, yes, Mr. Trump, yes, we should get red curtains, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to have the balls to tell him, hey, Schmuck, the only 10% are reporting. Yeah. Don't worry about the Young Turks panicking. It's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Anna, we we had another story, but we're not going to have time, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. Guys, here's the deal. We're going to take the break now, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and we will be back uh, uh, fairly quickly. Uh, you're not going to miss any results, okay? Because we'll be back plenty of time before the next set of poll closings. So just hang in there, and, and we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. It is a little hard pounding right now, at least. And okay. also, very soon, we will be talking about ballot measures. Um, there's been virtually no coverage of that so far, and it's really, really important. Today's so. the day that we basically might legalize marijuana throughout the country. Not in every place. But we could break the camel's back today. Yeah. Okay. And that's a huge deal. Uh, and then there's some uh, other important ballot measures. And then obviously we'll tell you on the close Senate races as well um, and congressional races. Okay. Uh, slight panic button. We'll be right back. who can't even say she's for the XL pipeline even after she's left? Give me a break. Give me a break. Come on. Give me a break. Come on. Give me, give me a break over here. <laughs> give me a break. Come on. Give me a break. Come on. Give me a break. Give me a break. We also must recognize that it's a very complex place. You know, the Chinese are there. Uh, I have... Uh, uh, several sources that I've gotten material from. I'm surprised that my sources are better than theirs. He's taller than me, he's like 6'2", which is why I don't understand why his hands are the size of someone who's 5'2". Have you seen his hands? And you know what they say about men with small hands? Look at those hands. Are they small hands? He referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee. Oh, I don't 
know what I said. Uh, I don't remember. I think the next president needs to be a lot quieter, but send a signal that we're prepared to act in the national security interests of this country to get back in the business of creating a more peaceful world. Please clap. <laughs>
right, back on the Young Turks. Uh, look, Johnny Pie is back. Anna's going to get ballot measures for you guys. We've got a lot of poll closings coming up in five minutes. Alabama, Connecticut, Delaware, D.C., Florida, Panhandle, Illinois, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Mississippi, Missouri, New Hampshire, very important, New Jersey, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, very important, Rhode Island, Tennessee, uh, are all coming up in five minutes. But now, uh, while we were in the break, um, Donald Trump's lead in Florida grew to 3%. And we had a little bit of wheezy. <laughs> I'm coming to join you, right? <laughs> but during the break, that has already changed. So, Ben, what's the latest in Florida? Well, 17% precincts reporting, but again, that's a vote today, clearly, because we're already at 6.4 million votes counted, and they voted 17% on top of the early voting, which is a giant chunk uh, that is not that, counted in the percent. That's 75% yes. of who voted in 2012. So obviously, that's not 17% of the electorate. Yeah. So, uh, and we, it looks to me like they'll probably go over what they got last time. But anyway, Hillary Clinton at uh, 3,328,000 to 3,135,000, so 193,000 vote lead. Which means if Clinton. I if I understand percentages, which I don't, that the raw vote number will move more slowly than the percentage counted number moved. That's since right. a larger number is already baked into that's right. that. That's right. Um, yeah, I understood okay. that because I'm working on my PhD. Me, her number, by the way, yeah, just, yeah. I, whatever you guys, it's changing this, they, dramatically they as we as we go. Like uh, <laughs> they do. Anyway, just dropped, but not much. Down to 167,000. But uh, obviously, votes are are coming in. They're ca they're clearly counting very rapidly. Uh, or early votes okay. are being reported. John and, and Ben, you guys are confusing us with all your is that, What is the percentage? What is the percentage? 49.8, two, two and a half points, 2.4 yeah. point lead for Hillary. She has Clinton. a 2.4 point lead, everybody. Everybody, yes. don't don't panic, she's, she's, here comes Hillary! And just an example of what happens probably around the country is that Jill Stein is not registering, or at least is lower than two, and Gary Johnson's at 2%. In a state that, you know, he polled higher than, like it just, people, come to the polls, many people, uh, not everyone at this table, but they come to the polls and think, I, I gotta vote for somebody who might win this, and then that, mm -hmm. that that's why the numbers for those third party candidates go down. Uh, several states that have a significant percentage in, Gary Johnson is at almost five. Is that right? You. Yeah, which is uh, significant. Uh, are they more red, deep red states? Uh, well, Indiana, he's at almost five, and that's a third in. Uh, Vermont, he's at four. New Hampshire, he's at four. Uh, West Virginia three, so I mean he's he's registering on Hillary these Clinton uh, with five percent reporting in New Hampshire, I guess. The, but we have polls closing at eight. I don't know what that's about, but uh, but they already have some vote counted in New Hampshire. Maybe there was some early votes there, but she's up uh, five thousand votes and sixteen percentage points in New Hampshire, uh, North Carolina. She uh, two percent reporting. Uh, there was a bunch of early votes there. I don't know whether we again. I we just don't know what whether these are early votes or precinct votes, but probably early votes. She's up by 100,000 votes, 52% uh, to 45% in North Carolina. She's actually taken the lead in Iowa, in Ohio, super early, less than 1%, although some significant numbers, uh, uh, significant in the most limited sense, 250,000 to 200,000, basically. She's ahead in Ohio. Okay, so if you are uh, on the Trump team, uh, right now you're panicking. Right. You had the same moment we had yeah. about 20 minutes ago where you're like, wait a minute, she's not only up in uh, Florida, but she's up in New Hampshire North and Carolina. Ohio and North Carolina. We didn't do North Carolina, did I we? Did, I did North Carolina, yeah. Uh, well, that's how many points? Ohio, Ohio, Ohio's two for six. Ohio's crazy early. North Carolina, 52% to 46%. 2% yeah. in, but but that's clearly, again, like Florida, yeah. that's not 2% because that's 1.5 million votes already. That's not 2% in North Carolina. Yeah. And, and so also the vote, so look, guys, uh, where the votes come from in the state it matters a lot, et cetera. Uh, so uh, you can't extrapolate too much from any of these. They could easily go up and down, as they already have. But there's real and not real, right? So... The amount of votes in in Florida is definitely real. In North Carolina, it's real. Right? In Ohio, not it's real. Nothing. Yeah. New Hampshire, should, I would count as not real. Exactly. We should understand some some states are they're full of people, and so stuff comes in steadily, and it, generally the ratio can stay similar. Some places have one big city or two big cities, and then all of a sudden a huge amount can change. I mean, we know in in Florida, the the Panhandle closes an hour later, so theoretically. I, I believe that's more conservative generally. It's because they're, they're coming in late. It's the it's, South. It's super conservative. Well, it's exactly. because the panhandle is so stupid they forget to turn their clocks back. 
<laughs> am I, am I wrong also, And bear in mind... <laughs> no, that's so, Jimmy, no, you have a little... It's based, go, on, the, yeah, it's based uh, on the lines. Oh, so absolutely. we believe that early voting probably <laughs> benefited Hillary Clinton, which means that the day of voting might benefit Donald Trump, which means that these results could change near the end. But also, a lot of big cities will leave polling places open, especially because there's such long lines, because we don't and they're just care about voting They're almost always slower to count. They just Exactly, and people. so that can come out at the end, which if is more you look in, If you dial in on Florida, already now votes count from the three counties, from West Palm Beach, Broward, and, and Dade County. Those are the three counties in southeast Florida, from Palm Beach down to Miami, uh, massively for Clinton, as, as it always is. Okay, so uh, based on what you guys are saying, three things went through my head. Uh, number one, uh, good news, um, we did not get any reports of voter intimidation and suppression in yeah, Pennsylvania. Sad day for Roger Stone. Yeah, so uh, we sent uh, Nomi Konst uh, to Philadelphia to try to figure out if there was any voter intimidation, poll watchers coming to intimidate uh, minority voters in Philadelphia. And she went and talked to the Democrats there. They got her to the places where they have the longest lines, et cetera. So she really did her due diligence there. So far, I've not heard back uh, any uh, wrongdoing. So that's great news. And so we'll you know, reserve the right to check in with her later, see, et cetera. But for the moment being, that looks good, okay? Uh, second of all, when John pointed out that the panhandle is more conservative, which we know, but uh, I had forgotten when I got relieved by the Florida vote where that she was up 2.5% that the panhandle had not yeah. reported in yet. I also believe uh, it's relatively... Pol pol the polls have not closed in the panhandle yeah. yet. But it's so also a smaller portion of the population. Yeah, yeah that's a great course. point. No, yeah. I'm back to panicking. Okay, yeah. Oh, great. no, the, the, I mean, 10 minutes, we could be freaking out. I mean, uh, we so shouldn't, you obviously. Might, you know that feeling you no had, offense. Jenk? <laughs> uh -huh. I, I have that all day and night. Either way. <laughs> yeah. I voted for Jill Stein, so I, how about a little sympathy? <laughs> <right here? laughs> I hear these numbers, I'm like, oh, oh, oh every way, no matter which way. <laughs> the, uh, uh, regarding North Carolina, which we have Clinton up 100,000 votes, 904,000 to 808,000. Um, uh, again, it says 2% reporting, but that's 1.7 million votes. And 4.4 million people voted in 2012, and their early turnout numbers were down uh, in North Carolina. You know, those could happen for a host of reasons, uh, yeah. uh, uh, but nonetheless, uh, uh, including that decision they made about opening the polls on the last Sunday before the election, uh, which could have suppressed some turnout, uh, which hopefully will increase turnout today. But again, 1.7 million votes out of 4.4 million, that's a, it's a significant number of votes, and she's up uh, five points, 51.5. In 44, we've had another uh, declar uh, declaration of a, of a state here. Okay, who's what's on the board, Ben? Well, Hillary Clinton has scored 21 straight points. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and uh, let me make sure I get That's these. That's seven uh, three-pointers. Uh, she hit seven straight three-pointers. Uh, and the states now called for Hillary Clinton are uh, the state of Maryland has been called for Hillary Clinton. I'm going to presume that that also counts the District of Columbia. They also won the Senate race. No, they have not called the District of Columbia yet. They have called Massachusetts and Maryland for Hillary Clinton. And on that board, New Jersey. And on that board, is that right? That's what it yeah. says. Yeah, yeah. And, it's for, and they've also called something new for Oklahoma Trump. Oklahoma for Trump. Oklahoma for, I, gotta, I thought we had it. Maybe in four more years. You got to get the board. Four more. You got to get the board. Okay, <laughs> so uh, Maryland and New Jersey, super comfortable. Hillary Clinton wins. We knew that from day one. Oklahoma, super comfortable. Um, uh, Lee uh, win yeah. for Donald Trump. Uh, uh, none of that is surprising. Did, um, swing did, states are where you got to look for. Yes. Did they have any updates on the ballot initiatives? Okay. Thank you, John. <laughs> okay. I really appreciate Anna that. Is here we with could the... keep talking about Florida though, and what we think is going to happen. Yes. <laughs> Don't tempt uh, me. Actually, we will. But <laughs> yeah. okay, hold. Before we go to the ballot measures, um, can I see seventy-five thousand? Um, we're at uh, a, we're right around. Almost at 70,000 uh, concurrent viewers between YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, so um, we are triple streaming. It's the first triple stream in uh, world history. Sorry, it just happened, okay? Right here on the Young Turks. And so share, okay? Sharing is caring. That's what my kids tell me. Uh, and um, until, they, of course, they have to share a toy. And then all of a sudden, not as much. Anyway, share on Facebook, retweet on Twitter. And on YouTube, there's a share button. You'll see you, you can share across many different platforms, including Facebook and Twitter. You can embed the link. You've got a website. You've got a blog. Embed it. Uh, send the link uh, as an email to your family and friends. 
Uh, as you can tell already, anybody who's been watching this, no one is more excited about this elec election than we are. It's a roller coaster ride. Uh, there, will, there will be either jubilation or absolute despondency. We will go way over 100,000 if Trump wins because every Trump supporter will turn to the Young Turks to see us uh, bemoaning uh, what has happened to the country, etc. And we will bemoan if that is uh, what in fact happens. By the way, if we get to 100,000 uh, viewers, we're giving away 100 uh, Young Turks baseball caps. These are not a shop TYT. This is only chance is, and, and by the way, this, we're giving it to 100 random people who shared. So we're going to look through the sharing files. There's this amazing new thing called a computer that allows you to do that fast. Republicans are going, yeah. impossible. How could you look through <laughs> all those shares them? in this limited a time period? It's impossible. How could Microsoft Word check every word in a document in 10 seconds? Impossible. 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 Okay, and uh, but at Shop TYT, we do have an awesome um, uh, poster about uh, the Dakota Access Pipeline and Standing Rock. And that those are limited edition, and they're going today as well. So shoptyt.com on that. Oh, there it is. Defend the land. Uh, and that's that's really good. That's really nice. Yeah, that's gorgeous. He's, uh, he's talented. Yeah, that's he's very talented. Who did that? Absent. Ali. Uh, Ali did that. Sorry, yeah. absent. absent. Yeah, we're not supposed to say who it is. Oh, absent. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's street artist in L.A. slash art graphic artist. Okay, uh, but he is. He's a well-respected street artist. Um, yeah, no, he's amazing. Uh, he also did the Bernie So Punk shirts, um, and, and, and protect the sacred. So. All right. Uh, so, and membership makes all this possible. Uh, there is a second stream uh, where we're giving you extra content for the members as well. And uh, you go to membership by tytnetwork.com/join. Tytnetwork.com/join. Become a member. Make this independent media possible. Uh, we've I've lost track. Have we been on air for seven hours? Yeah. And yeah. we've got another five to go today, at least. Okay. And I feel like we're just getting started because the results are coming in. And the minute we start reading results, my juice will start pumping. Like I'm actually, I was, you know, more jubilant, yelling, screaming earlier. And now a nervous Paul has kind of come over me. Like, um, you know, I've been saying for a week as the bad polls were coming in, brace for impact. But like, as Ben or John read the polls, I'm like literally like bracing. Like, okay, let's see what happens next. Two two states that don't matter: D.C. and Delaware. Uh, Clinton, she now has the lead. Here comes Hillary. She's got the lead. Okay, uh, but a lot in, at the eight o'clock hour, which we've now passed, uh, we a lot of the South is going to come in. This is like the Democratic primary, where the South came in early for Hillary Clinton. Now this, it'll oh, the shoes on the other foot. Okay, Ooh. and so don't stumble. Uh, now a lot of those uh, Southern states will go for Donald Trump. It, if it's not a swing state, it doesn't mean anything because that's already baked into the calculations. Okay. Yes. All right, Anna, ballot measures. Go All on. right. Thanks, God. All right. So there's <laughs> a number of controversial ballot measures uh, that voters will be voting on, and it's interesting because a lot of people don't like the way the electoral college works, but ballot initiatives, if you research them properly, um, give you more power to decide how your state is governed, um, how things will impact you. So just to give you a quick rundown of what's happening throughout the country, um, marijuana. Uh, a number of states are trying to legalize marijuana either for medicinal use or for recreational use. About 82 million residents could have access to legalized pot. Jeez. When it comes to, it's amazing, uh, minimum wage, that's uh, a ballot initiative in various states as well. 21.6 million residents live in states that could increase the minimum wage. Gun control is also uh, something that a lot of people will be voting on. About 50.5 million residents could be subject to additional gun control regulations. And then finally taxes, 123.3 million residents could see their taxes change in policies. Uh, so. Let's talk about uh, some of the ballot initiatives that stood out to me the most, okay? So there's uh, one in Florida, which is very deceptively referred to as yes on one for the sun. So it makes it seem as though it's very much in favor of funding solar, uh, solar power in, the Flo in Florida. It's very much in favor of giving residents the option of solar power. But if you look at that chart, you'll see that major utility companies uh, are in favor of it. In fact, they're the ones who are pushing for it, they're funding it, and as a result, it's likely to pass. Now, why is one in Florida a bad 
uh, ballot measure. Well, the utility-backed ballot initiative would continue to restrict the solar market in Florida by writing into the state constitution, okay, so that's a big deal, that homeowners and businesses cannot use third-party solar leases. Um, the state's restrictive monopoly utility law forbids anyone but the power companies from buying and selling electricity. Landlords cannot sell power from solar panels to tenants. Uh, popular solar leasing programs like those offered by Solar City and Sunrun are outlawed. So, so in essence, it's written in the ballot as if it gives uh, residents in Florida more of an option for yeah. renewable energy, but it does the exact opposite and it will be written into the state's constitution. I think that, uh, like, I mean, you know, what, here's what you need, in re here's what real leadership is in, in the country. I get it that, right, we can't, they're, the Koch brothers and all those companies, all those energy companies are allowed to pour money in to a, a, a proposition that they want passed, right? But we can have a law where they don't get to name it. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. like mm -hmm. there could be an independent commission that decides, no, we decide what, what we call one, and or what it's your group is called. what your group is called, or how we're going to phrase this, or how it's going to be built, and that that could change that everything because idea. it's so easy to deceive people. Yep. Because you know how we do this, we have a proposition. <laughs> <laughs> I think we uh, we call it the uh, proposition to uh, help regular people vote or something. Well, we already have yeah. something <laughs> like this in that we have commissions in many states that go over the wording of the proposition because they understand that in the past they've been incredibly yeah. intentionally deceitful. I mean, the, yep. the notion that you can sell a proposition the same way you sell diet orange crush is nauseating. Like, that's not no, right. No, no, but here's the incredible thing. People who advertise Diet Orange Crush cannot lie in their advertisements. That's right. It's the oh, exact Jesus. opposite when it comes to these propositions or political ads. Yeah. This is so deceptive. And so there are people out there, and understand what these utility companies are doing and why they're doing it. They understand that renewable energy is in the future because the way that we're running things right now is not sustainable. So they want a monopoly over renewable energy in the future. They want to ensure that they continue to make the money that they're making now, even if we switch over to renewable energy. So the really, really, really important thing here to point out uh, real quick is uh, is Florida. money in politics. So it gets poured in by ExxonMobil Coke Industries to try to deceive you. So you think like, hey, what's the effect of money in politics? The effect is they buy ads which tell you the opposite. If they thought they were right, they wouldn't have to play games. They wouldn't have to tell you the opposite. So they know that solar energy is popular, so they pretend they're on the side of polar energy. How do they trick you with all the money put into commercials? And, uh, and this is the definition of crony capitalism. They're literally trying to outlaw their competition. Yes. Remember, the Koch brothers are the ones who claim to be libertarian and say, oh, free market, all we want is the free market. They are monumentally full of crap. So the minute they have an opportunity to rig the system, and to kill off their competition by using the government, that is exactly what they do, and that's what they're doing in that ballot measure, and it's deplorable. And so know the reality and don't buy into their hype. By now, the that, way, that cool uh, one in Florida has a 67% chance of passing. That's, that's based on, uh, you know, uh, meta-analysis of uh, various polls. And the reason why is because utility companies have spent a whopping $26 million in order to pass it. And, uh, you know, the opposition to this ballot measure uh, did not raise nearly close to that amount of money. And what's amazing so. is that we subsidize these traditional energy companies. Then they get to use a portion of the money we've handed them to destroy up-and-coming industries that could use subsidies. That's yeah. right. It's a vicious cycle of crony capitalism. And so uh, w when the Supreme Court says, what, what, money's just speech. No, it buys you a bigger megaphone. <laughs> and with their bigger megaphone, they were allowed to pretend that they're on the opposite side of the issue to trick you into voting for something you thought you wanted, but it, it will do the exact opposite. So, it's grotesque. So can I give you an example of where money in sure. politics didn't work when it came to ballot measures this time around? Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned, there are various states that are trying to legalize uh, marijuana for either recreational use or medicinal use. In Massachusetts, um, they have a ballot measure to legalize marijuana. And the Catholic Church in the state got involved because they do not want to legalize marijuana. They spent nearly a million dollars to defeat that proposal. And um, as soon as they did that, the polls switched. At first, 
The majority of people who were polled oppose legalizing marijuana. Catholic Church gets involved. I don't know if it's a causation there, but they, they spend nearly a million dollars and now all of a sudden um, pro-marijuana legalization is winning. So we'll see how it works in Massachusetts, but I thought that was hilarious. And by the way, this is one of the few times that the Catholic Church has spent so much money on a ballot measure. What state yeah. was that? Massachusetts. So here in California, there's a bishop from oh. San Francisco who's also against uh, medical mar uh, the legalization of marijuana. He had a DUI in 2012. Of course. Okay. <laughs> yeah. John, call. Yeah, so uh, if you could bring up in uh, the control room graphic 41A, we have a Senate call. Mm. Oh, that's this is oh. a fun one. We knew this was going to happen. Oh. 41A. Mm. Marco Rubio is no 41A. Then yeah, Marco Rubio is expected that he will maintain his seat. Ooh. It was almost certainly going to happen. Yeah, Thanks, but there guys. was a there was a you know, it was, as like I said, happiest. it was like a 13 percent chance. So you, uh, you know, you hoped, hey, what if Clinton has yeah, a great right day? And, yeah. Now Patrick Murphy beat the big progressive Alan. Grayson, right? Mm -hmm. Wasn't that the guy he yeah. beat out in Florida? Yeah. 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 He beat him pretty good, too, didn't he? Yeah, also, he did. I, and I forget if you, you may have already called this the ballot initiative in Florida, the marijuana? Okay, hold, hold, hold. hold. Oh, uh, there's no, a I state haven't. that's been called. I know it's not surprising, but we want to give you oh, call, all the calls. Right. South Carolina has been called. Yeah, let's take uh, that's for, uh, that's for Donald Trump. There we go. There's your uh, board. Oh, no, that's bullshit, that board. Okay. Yeah, there's a board. Also, Florida has tightened up significantly. Yeah, Florida's tightened up significantly. So it's 44-40, Clinton and Trump, and Trump, and six states for Clinton and five there. Okay, so let me get to the tight states. So I'm definitely panicking a little bit. There's two states that are over 40% reporting, and neither one of them is good right now. Virginia, there's so she's leading in New Hampshire and North Carolina, but that's just... Six and seven percent reporting. It's a little bit more complicated than that because of the early voting. But Virginia, there's forty percent reporting. Trump's got a fifty-two forty-three lead. Yeah, now it's a, it's remember, one hundred twenty-two thousand votes. Yeah, fifty-two forty-three lead. That's a big nine-point lead. But remember, Virginia is very split. So if it's in Northern Virginia mm -hmm. has not come in, it'll make a big, big difference. And, and, and we know that came in last because we were sitting right here in the equivalent of these chairs in, in two thousand and six. Uh, when Jim Webb just closed and closed and closed and closed and, and passed yeah. George Allen. Yeah. Th that's, yeah, that's when, uh, it, that was his favorite opponent, the one he murdered. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But that was an amazing victory for uh, Jim Webb. That was a great night. Now, in Florida, with 59% reporting, oh my God. and on top okay. of that is the early voting, 49-49. Okay. It's, yeah. it's within 4,000 votes out of 8 million. What were the chances that Florida would be this close? Unprecedented. What, what's the percentage? I'm terrible percentage. I'm pretty that sure that one so is... So close. Razor thin. I'm pretty sure that one is precent, uh, precedented. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here we are again in Florida. Here we are again in Florida. So now look, if she wins Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Colorado, she does not need Florida. So I've been emphasizing that. Uh, in the coverage for the last three weeks, uh, I told you the critical states for Hillary Clinton are Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Colorado. And I called the election for her three weeks ago because she had a sizable lead in all three of those states. One that I thought she could withstand a heavy blow and still win. Yeah. She got a heavy blow from James Comey afterwards, and he kind of flipped around at the end there. Will she be able to withstand it? We'd have to, have to see. Uh, but but the other reason why Florida you could look at a half cup a half empty or half full is that um, if she wins Florida then she's almost certainly going to win the election she could lose Pennsylvania and still win yeah. if she wins Florida so if you're Hillary Clinton that 49 49 tie right now in Florida is not so bad yeah no and by the way in, when we talk about third parties I mean we often talk about the influence of like lib third parties on the Democratic Party. But right now, Florida's 4,000 votes off, and Gary Johnson's got 2.1% of the vote, almost 200,000 votes. Those are people who are probably more likely to be conservative. If he had that, he'd be winning fairly comfortably right now. Could Gary Johnson be the Ralph Nader of the Republican Party in 2016? Damn. Mm, I, I, I said it. I said it. I threw it out there. Now it's floating in space. Okay, uh, Anna. Yes. Uh, the marijuana ballot. Yeah, measure yeah. In so let's talk a little bit about Florida. They legalized marijuana for medicinal use. Uh, about Ooh. seventy percent uh, voted in favor of it. 
So, so that just happened. That's yeah. now that just official. Happened. It's official. Uh, people in Florida want their marijuana, but and only for medicinal use. Remember, during the midterm elections, they had a ballot measure that would have legalized it completely, and it lost by a tiny, tiny margin. Mm -hmm. Um, so who the money? Time. Who dumped the money in there? Who, what guy who did? It, it was Sheldon Adelson. Sheldon Adelson dumped and that money. And it actually won a majority of the vote, but they have this weird thing where you had to get a two-thirds vote. That's right. It had to a get a super majority. Yeah, yeah. It was this, just crazy. Needed, this just needs uh, yeah. the majority. And, and of course, yeah. look, if 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 it's if, if it's medical and it's dispensed the way it is here. Yeah. It's legal. It's legal. And, yeah, that's right. and this, is a, this is a state that needs it because they have a huge uh, pain medication yes. problem with people also overdosing. Needs and it for, they could use some weed. It also heroin. needs it because yeah. those people, every day, they live in Florida. Yeah, that's that's the best <laughs> point. Every day. Thank that you. was the best point made on the show so far. You know, okay. if you got the in Zika, you're going to need a little weed. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm going to go back to an old World War II. Wait, Donald Trump is up in Florida by, I believe, 18 votes. Well, oh, then, that's a, 28 votes, John. 28 votes. I'm bad at math. Well, then, three million nine hundred eighty-three thousand two forty-four to three million nine hundred eighty-three thousand two sixteen. That that's is unbelievable. That's a, that's, that's a, less than a bus. And that is and that is and, and at those four million, add Gary Johnson, we're over four million votes. There were only four point. There were, we're over. Uh, excuse me, over eight million. Uh, they only voted this like there bad. were eight point four million. Last time in 2012, so we we're, already have more than they. They're they, close to, not quite, but yeah. they're clearly going to blow past. So, so with all this, of we're doing this live uh, coverage here. It's 8:20 p.m. Eastern as this is happening. Florida again on a razor's edge, uh, and if Trump does win it, you should be super glad that that legislation passed about pot because you're going to have to smoke some <laughs> serious weed tonight. Okay, uh, and you know, old World War II reference here. Smoke them if you got them. And and we know here in California, once it becomes legal med, uh, for medicinal purposes, all of a sudden everybody's got a lot of back pain. Okay, so in effect, uh, now pot legal in Florida, and tonight we might make it legal in California. Period for recreational use. In which case, I think we've broken the camel's back. I think pot is going to be legal across the country, and it's, it's it, we've passed a tipping point. And this is look, this should not be understated. We won. So this is an issue. Uh, and I don't want to call it too early for the whole country. And it's still a Schedule One drug federally, which is unbelievable. unbelievable. And because of the results of, of the eight ballot measures or nine ballot measures today about marijuana, mo most of which are going to win, Barack Obama, before he leaves office, should immediately declare that it is no longer a Schedule well, keep, One drug. And keep in mind what the uh, DEA did uh, four or five months ago, which to me was a massive sign of. Okay, we're, we're we go slow. We're the federal government, but they opened it up for more research, and they were like, "And we'll we'll start looking at it." Yeah, and they left it on BS, schedule. Though. That was BS because if it's a Schedule One drug, in order to do research on it, um, it it really really hinders no, I know. scientific so they, research. I like the, they, researchers they, have to go to the federal government and beg them to uh, do the research, and if they say yes, they have to get the weed from one specific uh, place. Oftentimes the federal government says no because it's a Schedule One drug and it's too dangerous and we don't want you to do the research. Right, but so. theoretically that rule was to make it easier for them to get it. Well, it just it struck yeah. me as the kind of thing governments do as they begin a slow unwinding, and I, and then the, you know the voting of people in nine states is uh, uh, more powerful than that. So I, 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 I'm just guessing that I don't know whether Obama will do it, but it's it's coming. Yeah, uh, and it's a classic Obama thing. Sure. Like Ben's right, that's a good uh, first step. You, you've got a couple of months left. What are we talking about first step for? Like, and it's such a classic Democrat thing to do too. Oh, the whole country's on our side. I will now slowly move in that mm -hmm. direction. Get there already. Get there. Get there. You know, the uh, Republicans unjustly criticized Barack Obama for leading from behind in foreign policy. It actually on progressive issues like gay marriage and po marijuana legalization. That's where Barack Obama actually leads from behind. Look, the whole country's almost there already. For God's sake, you've got a couple of months left. Just, it's not Schedule One. You know it's not Schedule One. Move already. Move. Make the move. Um, okay, so look, guys, um, Trump's taking the lead in Florida. It's 61% reporting. It's not just 28 votes anymore, it's a percentage. 49 48 Trump uh, in it's, Florida. But it's, well, it's, yeah, it's 48.6 to 48.4. It's two tenths of a No. He's, it's, uh, it says 49 to 48, <laughs> and when you round up and you round down, that's, that seems larger. Uh, okay. I got you. I got you. It's, um, 
You, uh, you have more accurate uh, and complete information. But I, I'm in mid panic, so I have no mood for that. Okay? I got you. I got you. Oh, it's fourteen. Seven, seventy-five thousand. So, but you know what's funny is that, is that seventy-five thousand. Uh, that's seventy-five thousand. Is how many people are watching right yeah. now? Uh, um, Eric Wallace sent a screenshot. Thank you, Eric. Okay. Um, so, so, Ohio. So, Ohio. Uh, can I see a hundred thousand? Share. Share is sharing is scary. It's a shareathon. Give me a share package. Okay. <laughs> Send it around. We're gonna break the record. We're gonna go to a hundred thousand viewers. We're gonna beat TV. Go. Okay. Um, yes, Jimmy. No, I'm just th looking at the result. It's Texas is blue and Ohio is blue. Uh, Texas yeah. is below one too percent. Early, though, too early. So. But Ohio. Oh. Yeah, Ohio. Ohio's oh, got 16 percent reporting. Red. So let me be clear. Okay, let's give you percentages. Ohio 16 percent reporting. Hillary Clinton with a 52-45 lead. Okay. Now I I I don't want to take anything to the bank. And Ohio was polling in in Trump's direction. So hold on. And, and Ron Portman won. And oh, did he? Mm -hmm. Who won? Portman won his oh, uh, uh, in the Senate. Yeah, well, that yeah. again. Okay, yeah. and then so on the other hand, if it was reverse and Trump had a seven-point lead with sixteen percent reporting, I'd be panicking. So you know, so a little bit of good news out of and, Ohio. And, and the great thing about Ohio and oh, I Pennsylvania numbers are in. Oh, it's less than one percent reporting. Oh, Trump's thanks, up, Scott. He's up two hundred and thirty-nine to fifty-one. Because it was, on my screen it's eighty-one yeah. percent to seventeen percent. I'm like, oh, yeah. Weezy, I'm coming to join you, Weezy. It's literally, okay. literally a couple hundred votes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's bullshit. And, it's in bullshit. and I hope in Ohio that you know, as with uh, as with so many states, as she's up a hundred thousand votes. With uh, you know, we're already at that uh, seventeen one point seven million in in Ohio. Uh, you know, I mean, there's not so Ohio's got the most big cities in any state in the country. You know, they just roll big city after big city, and uh, yeah. uh, and hopefully those cities will will come in for Clinton. There's some Michigan numbers in too. They're crazy. Uh, early as well, uh, but uh, Clinton up uh, slightly there. Okay, uh, and of course, uh, Ohio's famous uh, Cuyahoga County not in yet. We're all waiting on Cuyahoga County. Uh, so that'll happen in this election, too. Uh, that happens in every single election. Okay, New Hampshire, 8% reporting, 53-42 uh, Hillary. Uh, North Carolina, 9% reporting, 52-46 Hillary. Yeah, and also again, it's, it's, and that it's, one it's, has it's, early voting. It's way more than nine percent. It's uh, they're already over half of what voted in two thousand. So that number in North Carolina is real. It doesn't mean it's going to hold, right. but it is a real number. Hillary Clinton leading by six points in North Carolina. So these are nowhere near a call. But oh, here we go. No, oh God. Virginia, fifty-one percent reporting now over the uh, f uh, midpoint. 52-44 Donald yeah, Trump. Yeah, he's still holding that lead. He's I, I holding just, the lead yeah, in Virginia. She's going to win Virginia. I just don't see a way that's possible, especially given some of these other results. I um, think she picked Tim Kaine then. <laughs> 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 well, we might say that by then, and I, to be fair, Wait, we might. Who is that? Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, as, as we look at the board here, um, yeah, oh, if you're going to be worried, just to finish the thought on Virginia, it, if you're... If there's any state not to panic over, it is Virginia, because Northern Virginia comes in later. Northern Virginia is heavily Democratic. So that is the one that is most likely to move in favor of Hillary Clinton late. So if that was the same numbers at 54% reporting and Trump with an eight point lead in Florida, I'd be totally panicked. Check the numbers in okay. Pennsylvania now. Just read the percentages. Just read them. 81 to 18. Oh, Hillary Clinton! Holy she's taking she, the lead! She switched it completely. Oh, yeah, now 80 to 17, now up 81 18. Okay. Yeah. Why didn't Here you comes warn Hillary. Us? So okay. literally, they counted like a thousand votes, and Hillary got all of them. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Oh, Trump, by the way, I saw uh, returns from DC. <laughs> Don't start. And uh, Trump was at 2.7% uh, in D.C. Is that right? That's Which, by the way, in terms of symbolism, that's perfect. Yeah. No, no. Uh, Hillary Clinton has 95% of the D.C. DC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hear he's going to be tremendous with his African Americans. That's tremendous. Okay, I think he's going to be tremendous. Okay. Uh, Ohio, 19% reporting now. 51-45, six-point lead for Hillary Clinton. Still holding the lead in Ohio. So... Yes, we're going to continue to read a lot of numbers uh, at you guys okay, because uh, these are super important states. Texas just flipped back blue. Like they Texas literally. back to blue. Texas back to but blue. How many? What percentage reporting? Forty nine, forty six, with uh, one percent in. But again, there's no way that's one percent. There's three point five million votes. Uh -huh. Like that's not one percent. No, not, there aren't there aren't three hundred fifty million people in Texas voting. I wonder why. <laughs> it's probably yeah. also not going to end blue. Yeah. 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 No, of course not. I'm just. Just, just amusing. They've us. got a lot of immigration, Ben. They might hit 350. <laughs> 54 percent reporting in Virginia. Every percentage 
makes it less likely for the comeback. Eight point lead still for Trump. I'll give you the people. I know a lot of people. Seven thousand votes for her to catch up with in Virginia. Uh, Electoral are, College right now, sixty to forty-four. Donald Trump has retaken the lead from Hillary Clinton. Well, that so, part is totally irrelevant. So she got a he got a nine state, or who did they? Uh, who did they call? Alabama. Trump's oh, like, following oh we didn't we didn't I declare. Can't. We didn't declare Tennessee, but now Alabama has gone. Tennessee and Alabama have gone to Donald Trump. This is devastating news slash irrelevant. Let me give you some more news. Gary Johnson is now at 3% of the popular vote nationwide. Jill Stein, 0.6%. Doesn't look good if she's going to get that 5%, but maybe a lot the of that's going to come from California and the safer states. Because yeah, we already have medicinal marijuana. Well, California, Oregon, Washington. Yeah, the safer states haven't come in yet, so let's maybe see. Maybe Jill oh, Stein Oregon thought alone. It was Portland uh, alone will get her to 5% nationally. Yeah, I think Jill Stein thought it was 0.5%. <laughs> She's yeah. going to be super bummed out tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, Sweet Home Alabama uh, is Sweet Home from Donald Trump. Uh, I believe I'm going to Alabama uh, in January, so um, I'm bringing hell with me. So, Alabama, you fucked up, okay? Uh, You're going to Alabama? Yeah. <clears throat> what for? Um, I'm going to Birmingham. Oh. And then I might go to Chattanooga, Tennessee. May, may okay. I jump in? Go, Anna. All right, so we have some results for ballot measures in Massachusetts. Um, so they have voted overwhelmingly to expand charter schools in the state of Massachusetts. 65.1. Uh, uh, hmm. I'm sorry to not. <laughs> oh, good. Oh. <laughs> oh. She really, she's fucking with us now. Oh. <laughs> All right, I apologize. They, uh, they voted Schilling. no on expanding charter schools uh, in Massachusetts. Also, Legalize marijuana. They would legalize uh, and regulate and tax marijuana for recreational use. So now in the state of Massachusetts, marijuana is legal. Yes! 51.1% said yeah. yes. 48.9% uh, said no. So wow, that was close. I, I thought it was medicinal. Yeah. This is recreational. recreational, yeah. Recreational use, not Which medicinal. Which means that if That's you went awesome. to Yukon like I did, you now not only will be driving every week into Massachusetts for liquor, but also to get weed. So okay, that's cool. and by the way, uh, I'm coming. Uh, so for Young Turks on Fusion, I'm going to Massachusetts oh, yeah. uh, next Monday. So within a week, I'll be getting high with you guys. At oh, <laughs> that is amazing. I don't think the law kicks in. The They're thing. setting that industry up fast. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I could also bring my own supply from California. Okay. <laughs> anyway, great day for pot. Great day for pot. Great. You know what it is, actually, though? It's a great day for freedom. Okay, America. freedom isn't free, but it just got a little freer today. <laughs> okay, anyway. 76 to 24 percent in Pennsylvania. Okay, Hillary Clinton with the lead. Okay, now, real numbers, real numbers. No, okay. no real numbers there. Okay, no. Virginia, here comes Hillary. 55 percent reporting. The lead is down from 8 to 7. Here comes Northern Virginia. She here was down 135,000 when we last spoke. It's 131,000. Okay, yeah. uh, now, Florida. And you're seeing there Johnson and Stein also. Florida, super real numbers, 68% reporting, 49-48 uh, Trump. Okay, still super tight. Except and, by about and, 100, a little less than 100,000 votes? Yep. Uh, yeah, 64,000 votes. Okay. Yep. Uh, so leaning red right now, but not, not a big deal. Okay, now, good news is Georgia has not been called yet. Okay, so uh, it's only 34 minutes since it closed. Uh, but it's not, and we knew this, it's not an Alabama, South Carolina situation. Uh, it, some have it as a swing state, so Georgia's not called yet. That's slightly good news. On the other hand, Kansas and Missouri are not clo called yet, and but they're definitely they, yeah. Sure, go but to they Trump. haven't been closed nearly as long. Uh, as Georgia, that's right. Uh, uh, real Georgia's been closed. Let me just give, sorry, Ben, because that's a great point by you. Georgia's been closed since 7 o'clock yeah. Eastern, and it still has not been called, uh, so that's good news. Tammy Apparently, Duckworth. Uh, elected to the United States. Yeah, Tennessee. there we go. Tammy oh, okay. yeah, nice. Um, got that before. Uh, some early uh, early results from uh, uh, Maine, and I, I don't know how early this is. It's a uh, uh, Trump two, Clinton nothing. <laughs> That's pretty early. Pretty early. In no, Maine. not not two million, not two thousand, just two two votes. two nothing, two oh votes God, to actually... no votes. Okay, yeah. we got them now up in Maine. Okay. Um, oh. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you one more thing here. Um, by the way, right now, you want to talk about early results. Mississippi leaning Hillary Clinton? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, Although, uh, you know, I have, a, I have a call. Mm -hmm. We have a I call. I have a call. Okay, so if you could uh, bring up Ooh, graphic 43B. On, I do us. this mostly for the suspense. It's not going to be hugely surprising to them, but 43B. 
Todd Young defeating ah. Evan Bai oh, in, in Indiana. So look, this is a, a, a situation where I'm with Jimmy. Uh, the famous Hill or High Water debates of, mm -hmm. of you know of these uh, many weeks and, and maybe even months, where you say the corporatist Democrats are more dangerous. Uh, I don't agree when it's against Donald Trump on a and on a national scale. On a senator like Evan Bai, I agree. Because Evan Bai comes in and goes, no, 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 it's okay. I'm a liberal, which is totally bullshit. Mm -hmm. And says, let's cut tax on corporations, let's do the crony capitalism, let's do all the giveaways, let's do the trade deals. And he gives them a, a, a veneer of centrism, uh, which they should not have. So it's a Democrat that gives a stamp of approval to almost every Republican position. So fuck Evan Bai, and I'm super glad he lost. Yeah. Good riddance to him. I, I'll, I, I'm, I'm not sure I'll agree with you if we don't, if Democrats don't win the Senate. But I hear you. you know, the points are salient, and I, I, what irritates me more than Evan Bai losing a, a seat that two weeks ago, and certainly two months ago, thought like a surefire Democratic pickup. It was yeah. in the, uh, is that I desperately three weeks ago wanted to bet on Young. Like yeah. desperately mm -hmm. wanted to try because yeah. I knew his, maybe the odds were still good, and it just seemed so clear to me that he was going to win. I mean, so I know that as these Senate returns have been coming in, the chances of the Democrats taking over the Senate have dropped by like eight points or nine points or something like that. I mean, the quality of the Supreme Court justices that we can get is dropping before our eyes right now. Like theoretically, if Hillary Clinton wins, then she'll still get somebody. But there'll probably be more moderate choices or something like that to try to get the crazy Republicans to actually approve them. And then that will have trickle down effects on Supreme Court verdicts for decades from now. So, and we're watching that. Let me give you a quick update, and then I want to uh, build on what John just said. So, North Carolina's tightened a little bit. Uh, Hillary Clinton down to a four point lead, just 11% reporting, though. But, but it's not. But really. with not just 11%, because yeah. it's got early voting in there, too. So 5147 is a real number, and she is up by four in North Carolina. So that that is definitely but good news on that front. By the way, Ohio now 20 percent reporting, uh, and Hillary Clinton still leading by four, 50 to 46. So th that's all good numbers. Now Florida, 69 percent plus early voting in, and he's still holding on to a one percentage lead. Trump he, is. Yeah, he's moved up to 56, about an 81, 81,000 vote lead uh, there in. Uh, uh, in Florida, Pennsylvania is pointless uh, right now. Uh, uh, again, one to watch. We always thought one to watch uh, New Hampshire. For some, I thought they'd have literally counted it all. It's such a small state. Uh, but again, an indication. It, and you know, we see Hillary Clinton right now up 11 points in New Hampshire. And if that were to hold, and she were to win by 11 points in New Hampshire, I would just feel supremely confident because this isn't comparing Pakistan to Ecuador. Like if New Hampshire voters think this way, you know, Pennsylvania is like. 350 miles away, like they're not, they don't live in totally different worlds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I would feel confident about uh, Pennsylvania, and, and of course Donald Trump really needs to win Pennsylvania, uh, needs to pull an upset in a state, in a blue state, Pennsylvania or Michigan, and win, and have the run of the swing states that he needs. So New Hampshire, one, would deny Trump those four electoral votes and would be a sign a point. of good things to come. And so. But Remember, vote, if but it's, you it's good counting slow. If you give any credence to my uh, theories and speculation, uh, I, it, okay, let's put it this way. Forget what uh, I think. If it's a super close race, um, it's possible that New Hampshire makes all the difference. So, in, in in my map, she loses Florida, which she's now down by one, but she wins Pennsylvania and Colorado and Virginia. But even so, she needs New Hampshire to put her over the top. But that's I have her losing Nevada. So she needs either Nevada or New Hampshire to put her over the top. That's why I feel like it's going to happen. Okay. Yeah, I, right. I, I, yeah, and Trump. Right, because Trump wins New Hampshire. It's great. He still needs Nevada. I mean, it's just the path for Donald Trump is rough. so much harder than the path for Hillary Clinton. But uh, and that's why we're also interested in Florida, not because a loss from Florida is devastating for Clinton, but a loss for Trump in Florida uh, pretty much slams the door. Uh, ABC News is calling the House. Ah, for the oh, for the Democrats? Believe, no, uh, 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 yeah. libertarians. No, it's the Reform Party. The Constitution Party, Reform Party are gonna they're gonna form an alliance. No, it's gonna be the Republicans are going to maintain control of the House, which we sort of expected. You know, we it was expected. only ever a dream we whispered of for a brief period, and it's not gonna happen. So uh, yeah, that was the brief period when Hillary Clinton was um, surging to double digit leads, yeah. um, and and that that did not last long at all, uh, and so. But um, here I'm going to quote Michael Schur as, as the expert. He thinks um, 
the, the Democrats can pick up 14 seats in the in the House, which would not be enough to flip the House, and we know that that's already gone. Um, and it, it's not just that it's ABC News that called it. We we knew that going into the election. Yeah. Uh, but still picking up uh, seats makes a difference, yeah. and it would be great if well, we'll t update you at the end, obviously, how many seats they picked yeah. up. And if the gap if between any. the Republicans and the Democrats in the House is not that large in this era of bipartisanship on the merits of certain issues, then, you know, some Republicans flip over, and sometimes the Democrats win, sometimes the Republicans win. <laughs> uh, by the way, we were. Isn't it crazy? Know, we just eh. expect that obviously in the House, every single vote will be party lines. Doesn't matter what the issue is. No one thinks independent of their party in the House. It's um, amazing. Well, the, poll, the, the they drew the districts that way. The uh, Anna mentioned the early when we were feeling particularly blue, even though we acknowledged that there was really nothing to feel blue about. We were still down. Uh, Anna mentioned uh, Patrick Leahy's uh, win in the uh, in Vermont, and then we all had a good laugh, saying he might have even been unopposed. He had an opponent. Oh, he did. Okay. Yeah, Scott Milne defeated by Patrick Leahy. So once again, we earned that one. Okay, yeah. Milne, take that. All right, let me give you the latest numbers here. Uh, now, seventy percent plus early voting in Florida, still a one-point lead for Trump. Virginia still a seven-point lead for Trump. With nope. Oh, uh, here comes Northern Virginia. It happened as I was speaking. Five-point lead now, down to a five-point lead for Trump. In Virginia, it was 63 percent reporting. 117,000. It was like 137, 131. Then it went up to 165, uh, and now uh, now dropped to one. Can I give us some good news in Florida? Nope. Okay, um, okay but just no uh, okay. I just wanted to scream. Here comes Fairfax County. Okay, go ahead. Well, so uh, so I'm obviously trying to figure out what's happening in Florida, and so I'm going down to the county level. And almost all of Miami Dade is in, like 10% is remaining, right. where she has a 30 point advantage. In when Miami to, Dade? In yeah. Miami Dade. Mm -hmm. uh, but, in but Broward the, County, where Broward, she has an even larger she did advantage, even better, right? they're only 15% yeah, in. Yeah, Broward has got a ton of votes. And out. Palm Beach, where she's up by 20 points, is only a little bit over half in. So there's a lot and of votes. And that's probably going to swamp the bayou. It's going to swamp a, the swamp, is what I'm basically <laughs> saying. A lot of votes coming. No, drain in for it, Hillary drain it. A lot of votes coming in for Hillary Clinton in Broward County, no yeah. question. Uh, so. That makes me feel so good, um, especially yeah. especially Miami Dade, where you know Jenk touched on it earlier, where there is a Cuban population that leans heavily Republican. Yeah. And Donald Trump has been so hideous to Latino voters that I think some of them might have switched their vote for a Democrat. And uh, in Broward County, which is as I said, only about fifteen percent in, she has this huge lead of like forty points. Uh, she has. She has over 200,000 more votes than him. So she could gain, theoretically, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of more votes just from that one county. Okay, um, now uh, I'm going to go to North Carolina where Hillary Clinton's lead is down to three points, 50 to 47. That's 13% plus early voting, so that's a real number. Uh, her lead beginning to go down a little bit but still holding, so that's good news. Um, the Ohio lead for Hillary Clinton down to two points. So that one is really dwindling with 22% reporting, 49-47 Hillary Clinton. So if I'm looking at this map right now, you told me, hey, Jenkins, it's 844 Eastern. Uh, here's your map. What do you think of it? Uh, if you told me this yesterday, a week ago, et cetera, I'd look at this map and go, oh, that's not as good as I would want uh, or hope for. but." I like this better if I'm Hillary Clinton than if I'm Donald Trump, right? If I'm Donald Trump and I need these states, and I'm still losing by two in North Carolina, I'm losing by nine in New Hampshire. Uh, New Hampshire is not enough reporting. I'm down by five in no, I'm up by five in Virginia with North Northern Virginia to come. I'm up by one in Florida, but I've got Broward and Dade and uh, all yeah. those to come. I go, this is not good enough. On the other hand, Hillary Clinton has not put them away yet. Know. If it, you know, again, we're not. There's no putting away. They're counting. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, agree to disagree. I'm also looking at count Virginia. faster and slash. If she, but look, let, let, let's let's put it this way. It's 8:45 now. Right now, it doesn't look like a landslide. No, yeah, I, I, I said it. I yeah, said it. Yeah, How yeah. do you count? Now it's out there. Oh, now also there. interesting uh, tweet. A little historical <laughs> reminder. Um, and then afterward, I would love to hear more about ballot initiatives. Uh, it, in 2012, Obama gained nearly 30,000 votes in Florida after election night. In 08, he gained over 40,000. So like theoretically, how? if we wanted to have an Al Gore, George W. Bush situation, 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, what I hope is that we have to, Florida, they don't declare Florida for two days, and, and it's a big debate whether Hillary ends up with uh, 323 or 293, you know, and that's, that's, yeah, that's yeah. what we're And Florida is, a, since it's got 29 electoral college votes, it, it by itself can swing the perception of the election from close to a landslide. That's right. Right, <laughs> because, it, right, to take it from, I mean, let's call it 30 points, like 280, which is my dad, that was kind of a close election, to 310, oh man, she killed him, right? So so that's a big, big difference. Okay, a uh, couple more updates for you guys. Now, TYT updates. We're at about 80,000 viewers, mm. okay? You're so close to 100,000. So sharing is caring, share on Facebook, retweet on Twitter, uh, share and embed and, and send the links of, on YouTube, okay? If we get to 100,000, 100 baseball caps to randomly chosen among the people who shared, okay? Um, will we look at how much you shared and, and tilt the scales? I, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes elections are rigged, I can't tell. Okay. Um, by the way, we, mi we missed a call. Oh, you, you hit call right away, go. Rhode Island. We got Rhode Never Island on the map. Well, wait, 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 you didn't say Hillary, right? Oh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> yes, yes, Rhode Island. I, I made it 60 to 48. It actually went for Evan McMullen. Okay, here comes Hillary, 60 to 48, closing in on. All right, uh, I think this is a good moment. Uh, Anna's going to give us a ballot. Uh, Eric Goldstein uh, and Thomas Grossman are the members of the day. How do you like that? You guys are the members of the day on the day where, where we have the most amount of people watching. Member number 1309 and 1310. Members make this entire thing happen. Be the independent media, tytnetwork.com slash join. Do it now. Anna, ballot measure. Okay, Go. first I have to correct myself because I made a huge mistake and I apologize. Um, so when I mentioned the ballot initiatives in Massachusetts, all the votes aren't in yet. Now, charter schools are very unlikely to get uh, expanded based on the huge lead that the no vote has. It's still like in the, in the high 60s. But um, all the votes aren't in. Medical marijuana still has a very, very tight lead for legalization. So I just want so to. So it's put not that over. Yeah, it's not over. I apologize. I'm so sorry I made that mistake. Um, but and is it medical or recreational? Recreational marijuana in Massachusetts. Recreational. Okay. Based on the polling, it's still likely to pass, but I'll give you the final um, outcome later when more votes are in. Now, with that said, um, we still have some more uh, results. These are very early results that I think are interesting. Oklahoma is likely to pass uh, a death penalty ballot initiative um, that basically allows you them... You don't even have to be convicted of a crime. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they would probably yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah. But basically, uh, there's this huge brouhaha in Oklahoma about uh, using controversial methods to carry out the executions, right? So there were a bunch of high-profile cases where this one man was injected with uh, the drug and then he was just suffering for 45 minutes before he finally died of a heart attack. And so this ballot initiative allows the state to continue doing these very questionable um, executions without having to worry about, you know, legislators looking at the method that they're doing and, and deciding whether or not it's cruel and unusual punishment. So that's, that's going to pass in Oklahoma based on what we're seeing now. Um, I'm, I'm predicting it's going to pass. Okay. Um, all right, we got to take the break here, guys. Uh, so we're going to be back in, in just a couple of minutes. We'll have the new closings when we come back. Um, Trump uh, still with a one-point lead in Florida with 74% reporting. Uh, Hillary Clinton, Trump with a five-point lead still with 69% reporting in Virginia. Um, Hillary Clinton's lead down to two points in North Carolina and Ohio, 17% plus early voting in North Carolina. Ohio 25% reporting. So uh, this thing is, uh, right now, it, it's not over. And uh, the every minute that we go forward, so if you told me at 8.49 p.m. it's not yet over, I wouldn't have been happy about that. So it's not like it's bad, but it's not good either. Like. But I mean, but there was no way it was going to be over at this point. Sure, no, they could have called. No, but they don't call. The last them few like elections they don't, have all been between eleven and eleven. Yeah, they don't. Basically. Yeah, I mean, they don't. Eastern not buying time. It. But there's nothing not to buy. It's true. Like I just said it. It's out there now. I'm not buying it. <laughs> Please buy it. <laughs> By the way, I need to I, sell uh, it. Do we have time for one quick fact? Okay. Just, I think this is fascinating, based on the joke that I just made before. In Virginia, you made a joke earlier. 
<laughs> okay, we gotta go. We gotta go. Okay, uh, Donald Trump <laughs> is currently up by like six points or whatever. Gary Johnson's at two point nine in Virginia, but in Virginia, Evan McMullen's at one point three percent. Really? Wow. Really? Yeah, wow, he's taking thirty thousand votes. Okay, that's amazing. That could make a big in difference. Virginia. Yes. Big difference. Okay, guys. Oh, uh, it's probably CIA employees. Okay. By the way, I, I we're at eighty five thousand when you combine the streams. Okay, we're so close. Can we see a hundred thousand? Sharing is caring. We'll be right back on the Young Turks with more results. I represent the renters too damn high party. Now, I found this party over 10 years ago because people were playing a silly game. But today is a big day, a big day for our movement. I'm here today to address the issue. People can't afford to travel anywhere. They can't afford to go any place on the weekend. They're stuck at home. Why? Because the car rent is too damn high. Car rent? Yes. Car rental fee. Jimmy, you're changing this whole thing. It I'm wasn't not, about I'm car not, rent. I'm not changing anything. You're just not no, listening. Jimmy, get out of here. Are you listening? Hit it. Rent is too damn high. My mustache hair cuts too damn fly. I'm on a mission again to give the people my word. Car rental around here is too damn absurd. Stop it, stop it. Now, Jimmy, this is crazy. This is supposed to be a political party. Did you sell out? That's what you think. Yeah. We need six cents. Change the game. To rent a car place to keep us sane. Yeah. S-I-X-T now on the scene. With car rental prices out of the scene. Cause rent. Any more questions? Not so fast. Show, I love this job. It gets bigger and bigger every year. We're gonna rock the boat. And that's my final judgment. What does the ideal body look like around the world? It's pop trigger time! Yes! Hi, Jeffrey. Hi, welcome to What the Flick? I finished watching it and I thought, oh, that was nice. Welcome to Nerd Alert at CES. That guy, and that guy is every type. single guy. We want to completely revitalize the Democratic Party and make it a party of the people. What's happening to millennials, the demographic that's most impacted by this? Yeah! A billion views. We're in the business of digital campfire. We're not the Young Turks, you're the Young Turks. The wealthiest 1% of the population in this country owns more wealth than the bottom 90%. So if we're going to talk, I guess it's not interesting, Mr. Chairman. Capitalism is great, but there's so much greed and so much money goes outside of this country that they've become criminals. You know, I've been saying this for 20 years, and he's saying the same exact thing that I've been saying forever, so I'm here to support Bernie Sanders. Frederick Douglass said it right, freedom is never given to you. It has to be fought for. This is the fight for the 
the soul of our democracy. And we will not be silenced. The speaker, it is incumbent upon us to do everything in our power now that the war has started to prevent unnecessary bloodshed and to support our troops in the most basic way by bringing them home alive and well. He's the candidate that I've wished for my entire adult life. We deserve to have our tax money pay for things that we need, like better infrastructure, better education, and not wars. Because right now, 61% of our taxpayer money goes towards wars that I don't think our country really wants to be involved in anymore. Bernie says, dream big, we can have it all. Stop giving the money for perpetual war. It's time we showed America some love. I love Bernie, he's my hero. The American people hold the President of the United States in contempt. They hold this institution in contempt. They hold the Republican Party in contempt. They hold the Democratic Party in contempt. They think that maybe, given all of the crises facing this country, it's about time that there was some bold leadership here and that this institution made some hard choices. And this is what the choice is about. We are spending $270 billion a year on the military, but we don't have a major enemy. I used to get gassed when I was a teenager demonstrating against the Vietnam War. Bernie was in all the way, he's been in all the way, I'm in all the way. The same ones that would put homos in the military, the same ones that would not fund... Mr. Brad. Chairman. Sit down, you socialist. Now, my ears may have been playing a trick on me, but I thought I heard the gentleman a moment ago say something, quote-unquote, about homos in the military. You have insulted thousands. I'm here for Bernie because he stood by me since day one when it comes to gay rights. In America today, we have more people in jail than any other country on earth, including China, an authoritarian communist country with a population four times our size. How does that happen? I work in criminal justice reform. He's the only one who's truly committed to decreasing over criminal. Back on the Young Turks election coverage, I have two things to report. One, it's panic time. Two, I'm on my third cup of coffee. Now shit gets real. Okay, <laughs> so here we go. Uh, Hillary Clinton's lead in Ohio down to one, 49-48, 26% reporting. Hillary Clinton's lead in North Carolina down to one, 49-48, with 22% plus early voting in. New Hampshire is an immovable object. 52-43 for the last 18 hours straight, for God's sake, New Hampshire, <laughs> count the goddamn votes already. It's only 13% reporting, but she's got a nine-point lead there. Virginia, five-point lead, 73% reporting, that's for Donald Trump. Uh, Florida, Donald Trump, one-point lead, 74% plus early voting in. That is a hell of a lot of votes in, but let's hope that Johnny Pye's analysis is correct, that the ones that are not in yet... Well, it's a fact. Uh, some of the ones that are not in yes. yet are Broward, Dade, Broward and the, the hasn't pro moved. The problem when you when you start talking about the counties that aren't in yet is that you tend to look at only the counties that you like. That that's aren't right. In yet. That's right. Oh, now, that's specifically that, what I'm doing. Yes. That said, uh, in big city, in where there are big cities, like in, where there's dramatic states with dramatic differences that are bifurcated, Cenk. Um, like yeah. Florida in South, not not the only place, but so Florida, <laughs> one of the strongholds for Democrats is Southeast Florida, uh, uh, you know, Palm Beach, Broward, Broward, and uh, Dade counties. Um, there's a ton of votes in Broward, not in, and 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 it's not like there's a and many of the rural counties that went for Trump, they've already been counted. In Virginia, uh, where I'm stunned by the lead that 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 Trump has, uh, but he's up 128,000 votes. Um, with 73% in, but she's got 100,000 votes coming in Fairfax County. They're coming. It's what did I tell you? I said Fairfax County. I said it, and it was out there. I said Fairfax County. You said it. There's no question, Jake. <laughs> you said it. Um, um, and, uh, and a bunch of some votes in, well, looks to me like about 12,000 votes in Loudoun County. But she's up 56,000 votes in Fairfax County with slightly under half of the precincts. Now, we don't fully know that those precincts are going to double the number. That's If they did double it, that's, uh, 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 by the way, no, so she doesn't have 100,000 votes. She's got 60,000 votes there. Excuse me. 
Yeah, I'm. I'm now worried about Virginia. Yeah, yeah, I'd be worried yeah, about Virginia. I'm, I'm, no, it's official. It was an eighty percent chance. Yeah. It's, it, no, it's official. Uh, we're worried about Virginia, and if she loses Florida, then uh oh, she needs Virginia. Okay, that's not an insignificant uh oh. Okay, so look, a lot of this is fun and games until you lose the country. Uh, so if this is all a lot of drama, but at the end of the day, Hillary Clinton pulls it out. Either pulls out Florida, pulls out uh, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. Okay, boy, that was <laughs> well, that was a roller coaster, right? That was fun, right? Uh, if at the end of the day she doesn't pull it out, Donald Trump, President of the United States of America, the most powerful man on earth for four years. That's immediately indicted. <laughs> <laughs> and put in jail. <laughs> okay, well, from your mouth to God's ears, but I don't think that's how it's going to work. Uh, there will be indictments, and somebody might get like, could you imagine he arrests Hillary Clinton within six months of his presidency, taking the uh, office, and puts her in jail? It'd be kind of funny. And no, it would not. I know. No, it would not. Okay, so um, anyway, right now, North Carolina down to one point. Ohio gone, leads gone, 48 48, uh, tied in Ohio with 28% reporting. Look, uh, again, context here. Uh, almost every scenario that we've got, uh, uh, Donald Trump wins Ohio. So if he wins Ohio, it is not unexpected and is not at all necessary for Hillary Clinton's win. If she won Ohio, this thing's gone anyway. She, she wins easy. I feel easy. the same way about Florida. It's basically yeah, yeah. the same. Yeah, but if she loses Ohio and Florida, well, then she better win Virginia and right now she's not winning Virginia. 66-48, we've lost Mississippi. Uh, Mississippi's <laughs> called. Uh, Mississippi's called. We have lost Mississippi. Uh, uh, Mississippi, we have a problem. You're gone. <laughs> you have a problem with Boy, the I tell you, you look at You look at Georgia and, and Hillary Clinton, 23% uh, reporting, and Trump up 328,000 uh, uh, votes, 63 to 35. They haven't called it yet. That's, because yeah, they clearly have, Georgia? This clearly haven't counted a vote in Atlanta, but like it just tells you how many votes are coming in Atlanta. I I, I don't harbor a second of belief that he's going to come back and win that, but nonetheless. Okay, guys, I'm now super super nervous. We've now passed nine o'clock Eastern, uh, and nothing's been called. Okay. Nothing of import has been called, nothing but red states and blue states so far. That's right. That is not at all surprising. Another, uh, another call. Oh, here we go. Call. New York. Clinton. Uh, Donald Trump has lost his home state. He lost his home state. He lost his home state. Yeah. How can he possibly win? Okay, kidding for like 15 seconds stretches now because I can't bear anything more. Uh, <laughs> up and down the middle of the country, all red. Uh, have we called all those out yet? Oh my no, God, we he haven't. built a wall. Okay, so let me, uh, he built a wall. North Dakota, gone. South Dakota, gone. Nebraska, gone. Kansas, gone. All called uh, for Donald Trump. I don't have my glasses you know, uh, in. Uh, uh, Wyoming. 15 people no, in that stretch. So Wyoming, we're, we're, gone. I don't see New York called yet, but, uh, but Illinois. Illinois. Ca called. Yeah, Hillary Clinton has won. Two out of her three home states. So they have. <laughs> there we go. There's, there's New York. New York just got put on the. Uh, New York just got put on the board there. Um, so, uh, but for example, like here at uh, the the calculation, wow, it just dropped five percent. So okay, the calculation. The way, hold on, yeah, this is serious. So the calculation that the New York Times has had is a running prediction of winning the presidency. Last time I glanced at it, John, I don't know if you've been looking at that win presidency meter mm -hmm. below the states, no, below no, the map. Well, it was at oh, eight, yes. it was at eighty percent an hour ago for Clinton. What is it now? Sixty eight percent. Okay, uh, God damn it, I'm nervous. Okay, you should be nervous. This is not kidding around anymore. I'm not kidding. Okay, Gary, so oh, and ho 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 hold hold Ohio gone. Uh, so it's not gone gone, but it's uh, now Donald Trump's taking the lead. Twenty eight percent reporting. It's still forty eight forty eight, but Donald Trump now leading in in Ohio. By twelve hundred votes. Okay. Yeah, but you know it's trending towards Trump. That's true. Okay, Virginia. God again, damn it! It's seventy-seven percent reporting. Still a five-point lead for Trump. Um, Florida, seventy-six plus early voting reporting. Forty-nine, forty-eight, holding steady for Trump by one point. I feel better about Florida than I do about Virginia, uh, because Virginia now ooh, five points is a big lead with seventy-seven percent reporting. Well, obviously, one percent is as small a lead as you can have in Florida, and we got good places coming up. And historically, Democrats do better 
uh, as the count goes in Florida, as John made a great point about the number of votes that Barack Obama picked up the Look, day after the election. I, I'm, I'm willing to say this just so that uh, the Trump supporters can mock me afterward, but it looks like unless inside of these counties there's huge variation in neighborhoods perhaps. I mean, in Palm Beach, if the second half of Palm Beach is the same as the first half of Palm Beach, she will almost catch up based on that. Not quite. And Broward... Yeah, should take the lead. It, unless just, yeah. unless this doesn't include the fact that maybe Broward early voted at 70%. That's right, something. that's okay. right, that's right, which is, we, we just don't know. We're, we're, so we're... All right, Pennsylvania, not nearly enough in, just 5% in. The lead uh, in, uh, in North Carolina has essentially completely evaporated. It's gone. It's tied. She has, she's ahead by 6,000 votes. 28%. Look, it, I'll break down my code for you, okay? Gone means the lead is gone. Gone, gone means the state is gone. So Ohio, gone. 49-47, Trump now leading. He's got a two-point lead with 30% reporting. Um, so, uh, you know what? Texas. And, and so that Texas is, is gone, gone. Texas is gone, gone. Okay. Texas. So any talk of like, hey, turning purple, blah, 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 blah bullshit, gone. Uh, 9 p.m. Uh, poll closings that just happened about five minutes ago. Arizona, Colorado, oh, Colorado, we need you. Uh, Kansas, Louisiana, Michigan, Minnesota. Michigan is enormous. Uh, Nebraska, New Mexico, important. New York, already called. North Dakota, South Dakota, Texas, Wisconsin, Wyoming, all those called except Wisconsin. So Wisconsin is still important, should be a Hillary Clinton win, but it is not uh, absolutely clear yet. If you pull that map back up that we showed you earlier with um, that big red, uh, you know, wall, it is. It's um, uh, right in the middle of the country. And it really, as you look at the map, with blue all over the Northeast, red all over the south, and then red in the middle. Uh, obviously, the west is going to come in blue uh, with California, Oregon, and Washington. We, we do. We live in two different worlds. And so if you live in the middle of Oklahoma or South Dakota, you don't know what the hell is going on in, out here in L.A. And you think people who are for Hillary Clinton must be nuts. And us uh, folks that Some live on the coast... That. Yeah, I mean, we look at uh, the Trump guys and uh, put them in a basket, in a basket of deplorables. And so right now the country is goddamn split, man. It really is. By the way, the lead down in New Hampshire, finally it has moved. Not in a good direction. 50 to 45, down from five-point lead for Hillary Clinton with 14% reporting in New Hampshire. Can I, okay. can you North Carolina, gone. Donald Trump has officially taken the lead. 30% reporting, 49-49, but Trump with the lead. What is wrong okay. with this country? Well, here's, a, right. here's an interesting stat that they found out in exit polling today already. Uh, national exit poll found that the turnout's going to be about the same as it was in 2012. But here's interesting: percentage of white voting down slightly, so less whites are going to be voting this year than they were in 2012. And there was a record level of turnout among college-educated voters, driven by college-educated white women, a key democratic uh, demographic for Clinton. Said this is from ABC. Yeah, the, the exit poll numbers looked good, but you know I. I don't yeah. they're disappointed before, but yes, those are. I read those same things. I also read that turnout, and based on some of the states, like where we can see the turnout's going to be higher, that we had, I think, uh, I wrote it down. Where do I have this year for the turnout? Uh, 127 million people basically voted in 2012. That was down 3.3% from 2008, and they thought maybe this year, I just read 140,000. So that would be, you know, nearly about a 10% increase. Mm -hmm. uh, so. That was, I don't know, the exit polling may have disproven that. Hey, guys. Uh, more, more, I, four, a fourth of all voters made up their minds in the past month. Okay, I, I don't want to alarm you too much, but uh, seats in the upright position, okay? Uh, this Virginia numbers, they don't look good, man. They just don't look good. So, by the way, Ohio, the lead grows for Trump, 50 to 47 now, three-point lead, 31% reporting. Virginia, 78% reporting, and it's 50 to 45, still a five-point lead for for Trump, I, I keep emphasizing Virginia. She, sh yeah, that's supposed I, to be an easy win. I don't have it in my six states. I don't have it in my six toss-up states that uh, right, she, decide the election. She had a comfortable lead in Virginia. Yeah, well, they weren't even really campaigning hard in Virginia. I will say that, Cenk, though you have it at fifty to forty-five, it's really that's a it's four point one points. It's mm -hmm. forty-nine point five to forty-five point four. Uh, she's reduced the lead to one hundred nine thousand votes. Uh, so you know she was 168,000. It's whittling down, but uh, that's a that's a fair amount of votes to uh, uh, to go get. If she loses Virginia, look, I'd have to do the math on it again, and we'll do it here in a sec. But 
I think she has to win Florida. If she wins uh, Colorado and Nevada and, and New Hampshire, I don't think it's enough. Without Virginia. Without Virginia. I think that's right. So here it is. Let me chase. Virginia's 13 points. I had her, um, even if she like, you flipped Nevada for six. 258 and the it's New, not New enough. Hampshire, uh, 262. No, it's you not enough. Colorado. Well, no, what about Colorado? No, Colorado. I, I have her winning Colorado. Uh, I and, see. Yeah, okay. I it's not even close to enough. No, she's, if, she, if she loses Virginia, she's got to win Florida. Or North Carolina. I mean, or something yeah, else. Yeah, or North Carolina. But now North Carolina, yeah, same, same place. 32% plus early voting in. Uh, Trump with a slight lead. It's tied 49-49, but he's got the slight yeah, edge there. Yeah, 13,000 votes. Um, so um, that's not to even speak of Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, because those numbers are not really four, indicative of anything 4. right 1 now. 4.1 percentage lead in uh, Virginia has been reduced to 3.8%. That's down to 103,000. So they've begun... Here's, here, I, here, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Counting has begun. Oh, okay, thanks, God. Virginia down to a three-point lead, not just a four-point lead, a three-point lead yeah. for Trump now with 80% report. But well, the great thing is that I give Jack the exact number, and then you round it the wrong way. Like, yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> I just said 3.8, and you're like, it's three. I'm like, well, actually, no, it's, it's You have it's the more exact numbers. Yes. You have the more exact numbers, but I see three points here. and uh, That makes you feel better. It, it, it does. <laughs> okay. It does. Right. Three sounds a lot better than 3.8. 3.8 sounds like crap. I'm, still, I'm back to panicking. <laughs> And by the way, it's like I'm in a like I'm in a bad zone, not a good zone where you the basket's uh, seems like it's gigantic, right? You're in a glass like, box where of I, emotion. Sometimes I could barely hear you guys because in my head it's like mm, <laughs> she's losing Virginia, needs Florida, mm, right? And um, God damn it, if we need Florida, are you shitting me? And 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 Florida is razor thin again with 85 percent plus early voting in. And he's leading them by a little bit now. Are you shitting me? That's where we are right now. So, okay, all those dreams of a landslide, it theoretically could still happen. She could pull out Florida, well, Virginia, and North Carolina. But right now, ain't no landslide. So here's the, for, here's the upshots mm. forecast, running forecast, <laughs> right? Uh, the New York Times is what Nate Silver left behind, right? And uh, mm -hmm. they had it as a 85, they ended, I think, at 84% for Clinton to win. They have it at the president, based on everything we've seen, still 68% Clinton. But that ain't 84%. No. That's 68%. The Senate, which we had all hoped to flip, is they have it at, they were all less bullish on the Senate than others. Mm -hmm. But 77% that the Senate stays uh -huh. in the hands of Republicans. And the House at greater than 95%, you know, that are some of it. It's oh. Donald Trump. All right, guys, uh, look, I'm going to update you on two quick things. And uh, um, so I, I, I would read your tweets if we're in better times. I'll get to that later. But um, so live stream concurrent uh, viewers, we've reached a r way past the record, past this record of when we had Bernie Sanders on. We've got... Uh, and over the course of the day, this number is going to be much, much larger. When you take in the videos we put up on YouTube and Facebook later, it gets into the tens of millions, right? But for right now, a live stream on, uh, on, on the Internet is a very hard thing to get to a significant number. We're at over 87,000 now. Yeah. So we're at almost 100,000. Keep on sharing. Uh, and North Carolina. North Carolina, what's happened? 49-49. Uh, he, yeah, he's taking the lead. I know. Uh, so... Uh, and thank you, members, for making this uh, coverage possible and, and for being with us throughout. TYTnetwork.com slash join. Um, so I got but, a little bit of good news for you. Okay. Oh, thank God. I need the good news. Uh, so whereas you, you still see it as three, uh -huh. but in Virginia has actually moved from 3.8 to 2.7. So a four. Oh, that's a so big round move. that down to big one. Move. So let's just call it, and, let's uh, call it four. No, no, <laughs> um, no, no seriously. So it's seriously. down to, so let it's, me, hard, again, hard oh, numbers. Shit. You remember the hard numbers were saying... It's down to 77,000 votes now in Virginia. Okay, and, oh. it, it, but the percentage reporting has not moved very much. It's 82%. That's good news. Yeah. So if she had closed to within 2.4, but we're at 98% reporting, you're screwed. At, eight, at eight, only 82% reporting, and she's closed the lead significantly, finally, good news out of Virginia. And uh, bad news out of Colorado. Super early, well, not super early, 18% in, and... Uh, a Trump with a 3,000 vote lead. They're basically well, tied in Colorado. And also, and so Florida has up, updated a little bit. Pretty So Broward's still at 16%. Almost everything else is above 90%. Like, that's pretty much all that's left. They are literally they're incompetent down there. 
there. Get in, your shit in, together, yeah. Florida. Okay. It, what, what's Palm Beach? They're dude? like trying to get to the ballot box as a crock. Yeah, Palm Beach way. is, they're counting up Palm Beach, and, and his lead, actually, her percentage lead has evaporated a little bit. I mean, uh, still some left in Dade, but not too many votes left there. But Broward, as John said, well, Broward is about, it's about half, John, right? So let me yeah, give you more context. Slightly less than half. And if it were to repeat itself, that's 260,000 votes. For Broward, I'm seeing 16% reporting. What are you seeing? I'm seeing, no, I'm seeing 278 of 577 precincts. Interesting. Okay. So that is half, half. But half. but that would still be. That's not good news. No, but it's 262,000 votes. Oh, so it's a lot up, of, yes. yeah. You know. Okay, more bad news. Um, Ohio, now he has built a six-point lead. 37% reporting, 51-45. Uh, North Carolina, he's now taking a 1% lead uh, with 36% plus early voting in. Wow. Uh, New Hampshire, 16% reporting, and the lead is down for Hillary Clinton down to three points. Okay, yeah, I don't see a fucking landslide here. I don't see it at all, okay? Uh, what I see is a really, really tight race. So the he was supposed to win Ohio, and he's sprinting out in front of her, okay? There was a little bit of jockeying for position in the beginning, and I, look, just always a caveat, they vote at the same time. We just get the results in at different times, okay? So it's not like the, there's more votes coming in as not, we speak. Momentum is not a real right. thing here. Yeah, there's no such thing we as only momentum feel it. here. Right, but what is real is the more percentage vote is in, the more solid that result becomes, the more likely that result becomes. So. As he's sprinting out ahead in Ohio, well, he was supposed to do that. Okay, fine. But she was supposed to be sprinting out ahead in Virginia, and she is not. She's behind in Virginia. She's behind in Virginia. Okay, they were supposed to be relatively tied in Florida, and they're relatively tied in Florida. Okay? Again, 88% plus early voting in Florida. So a lot of votes have been counted in Florida. A lot. And, and so if she had, if Virginia, if Ohio had been called for Trump right now, and Virginia had been called for Hillary Clinton, and we had the same kind of uh, tied situation in Florida, I'm not sweating it. And then I go, okay, good, she won Virginia, that means she'll win Pennsylvania, and she doesn't need Florida. But she's not winning Virginia. So it doesn't mean she's not going to, she, she might. Uh, I, I don't even know what's likely at this point. I mean, Ben, okay, you got yeah, a call? We just, no, no, I got a call, well, yeah, but nonsense ones. Okay, but, uh, all so right. keep talking, I'm just putting it up. Just no, yeah. So here, I want to go to Virginia in a second, but no, go ahead, make, make these calls. No, we're just at we're it's at one twenty nine, one ninety seven. The, the Times has it at one thirty, but uh, I don't. We don't have any specificity on that uh, Omaha district in uh, Nebraska. So right now, we're only giving him the four electoral votes in Nebraska. Arkansas uh, also going to Trump. Take again, nothing. So far, no upset has been called yet. So when you see one twenty nine or one thirty to ninety seven. Nothing unusual Nothing has happened at all. Happened, yeah. What is unusual is that this incredibly close race in Florida, Trump solidly leads by a point and a half, and a lot, 89 percent reporting. So we've had a tremendous number of votes counted, and he's up four point. He's up 148,000 votes, 4.4 yeah. 4 million to 4.3 million and change on both of them. Uh, and of course, Virginia, we were hoping for this close, and uh, we're still kind of waiting for it, although. It's certainly closed some, but it's still 78,000 yeah. votes with 83% uh, reporting, and we're obviously hoping that they're all in the Bex County and they'll all go to Clinton. But she was up six, seven points. I think the what was the prediction for the New York Times and I mean for the 538 in Virginia? John, do you in remember? In Virginia? Yeah. They the, the odds were 80% that she would take Virginia. So and again now they're not 80% anymore. I mentioned the upshot. I mentioned the uh, the uh, upshots running forecast uh, of the likelihood that Clinton would win the presidency, and they'd had it at 84%. And remember, it was at 68%. Like what? 20 minutes ago, 61%. Mm. Dropping. 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 61%. Her vote total that they thought she'd win He's the popular vote by four points, and then it dropped to 3.8. Now it's fluctuating right around. 3%. Now it's down to 60% likelihood that Clinton wins the presidency. Okay, uh, so I'm bad with technology. Oh, thanks, Scott. Okay, my uh, internet went down uh, just now, and so I was about to lose my mind. Okay, um, <laughs> so luckily your internet has not gone down. By the way, if anything does happen to the stream, because we're now really at, at record numbers here, uh, you go immediately to our uh, at the Young Turks on Twitter to get updates on uh, 
what's going to happen next with the stream. So, so far, no problems, thank God. If there are any, at the Young Turks on Twitter, and you'll get messages on what's going to happen. New Hampshire has been uh, totally uh, oh. tied up, 100% tied up. Oh, 64, Jesus Christ. 200 votes for Clinton. Jesus Christ. Okay. It's still early. God, no, no, this is bad. This is, is gender Okay, We've Mark Thompson's month month. here. Mark Thompson's here. I mean, I uh, look, I would take a solo bad. shot. You got a solo shot of Mark. Uh, hey, there it is. Hey, Mark. Well, hi, guy. But what happened to the big gender gap that we were here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The most misogynist, yeah. objectionable, yeah. loathsome yeah. thing yeah. comes out yeah. of that guy's mouth. And yet, the women. I'll tell my dad. How does that happen, Jack? Okay, I, I never believed in the gender gap. Let me be uh, clear about what that means. So All right, Donald Hillary Trump won Texas, whoever told me Texas is going blue. So this is where I think that the press is biased, and so, uh, it, and it drives me crazy. So Huffington Post would okay. report day in, day out, she's winning big with women! And I'd always think, yeah, how about men, right? Okay. So there's two fucking genders in the country. I got it. You want to celebrate and make it seem like Hillary Clinton's got a giant lead. And Huffington Post, what happened to your fucking 98.4% chance that she's going to win? Does it look like 98.4% chance? I there told you, you you were full of shit. Okay, so, and then what, what I would report to you guys is, yes, she has a big lead. Mark's right in the Among Women. You know what his lead was? I'm going to forget the exact number. But among white males... No, no, no. That's fine. Let it be organic. Shoot, I told you. Uneducated, un un uneducated un meaning like no college education, white males. He had something like a monstrous 44 point lead. How come I didn't see that in the headlines of Huffington Post and the rest of the press? Because the rest of the press thinks Hillary's going to win. Hillary's going to win. Hillary's our friend. She's going to win, right? That, 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 okay. that, number, that number's not right. I mean, you may have seen it in one poll, but it certainly wasn't true. It showed it was polls like at the end. We, I read what it was among white men without a college education, and he led it. But he, so did Mitt Romney by about the same number. Yeah. Uh, all right. Look, uh, let me give you some numbers here. Then we're going to go to New York. New York, we've got a live protest going on in Hillary Clinton headquarters. <laughs> to give you a sense of how bad it is right now, these poll numbers, uh, the not poll numbers, actual results of the election, uh, I told you that. Okay, um, Okay. so they might actually have to move this protest to Trump headquarters because he might win. Okay, can we go to New York now? Okay, we're going we're to New York right now. Uh,